Hello, and welcome to Spotlight, the official podcast of Grapple. I'm Better. And I'm JP. We're on a, back on a Monday night, JP, uh, for another podcast. Just finished at a, a raucous pre-show uh, where we talked uh, mm. the best wrestlers in the world poll uh, via uh, Jamesy. I think that's what, that's what it is anyway. A little bit of a uh, gladiator's chat, which uh, we're saving at a, a bit for on the main show. Fuck, Mary kill, Eddie Kingston, Eddie Guerrero, Eddie Dennis. Um, all went off, but uh, serious business now, JP. Um, the, the, uh, the Spotlight podcast, this is where we do a uh, serious wrestling analysis and, uh, and don't mess around with, uh, with such things. No, which is uh, why we've gone very much back to our roots of like very much local British wrestling and anything sort of like British television content at this stage as we're becoming like an unofficial gladiators podcast as well for the night. <laughs> <laughs> It's back, mate. It's back big time. And I tell you, it's back on a local level, but more of which <laughs> later on. Oh, go into. You want to give us a preview of that? Where did you end up? What was the company you went to see? BKPW, was it? Yeah. Uh, British like Kingdom that. Professional Wrestling. It looks British like wrestling Kingdom on a hill. Professional Wrestling. Looks like it's... you just get a ring and they just pop, they pop it out and they're just like, ah, anyone wants to come, give us, give us a five and you can, ah. uh, you can come and watch. Um, right. Featuring the stars of Dragon Gate. I can't wait to but... tell them what that was. For one night, the Beecroft Theatre at the Oxford Academy, because it's part of an academy chains, not to be confused with some sort of fancy music venue. Like, it's nothing, nothing like that. It's a school hall, but I think it might have been in the ECW arena for some of these matches in there. Honestly, it was like, it was, it was fucking, it was great. It was, and I tell you what, it turned the lads around. They were into this. This was, it, oh. well, we'll kids. talk about it from like a matches later on, but it was like, yeah, it was cracking stuff. With a couple of lads from Dragon Gate and Brian Kendrick and Ho Ho Lung. Is it like a regular, like running, like family leisure centre type thing? It's or like, is a, it like a where you'd hold a big school assembly, basically, right. but with some elevated seating on two sides, yeah, oh. and a row of chairs where we were sat. So it was like family of four. So there's me, Vicky, well, technically five. Charlie was there. They didn't ask for money for him. And in fairness, he watched it like a fucking champ. He loved it. But I think you know that now. Like already, it's football and professional wrestling. To say he's not his father's son is somewhat of an understatement here. Um, like he got you a know, great photo taken, didn't he, with, uh, yeah. with John Skywalker? Oh, that's, a, that's a beast. Can I, can I not go on the show images? I wanted to make it the entire spotlight image, to be honest. Please, I don't know if you've got it handy, but I, hell, that's a photo. no, you're fine. I I never thought that would be a sentence I would say. Well, I thought oh, it, there's Sean Skywalker. He'll be holding my lad soon enough. Like on the very little <laughs> Dragon Gate that I've seen. And I was, you know, too tired to try and bullshit my way through a Dragon Gate conversation with lads who are champions in Dragon Gate. I thought, nah, that's a step too far. But, um, mm. but he seemed very, very nice. He's got like he's got a cracking set of teeth on him. Like it was really right. something to be envied there as well. But the setup, I'll just say, is two hundred odd people there. Like, and there's stuff I've got to say about like in ring. But I know there's other things we're gonna. Are we going to go go to those Did first? You know, or you wanted me to go straight in? Or... We might be into it already. What did he think? What did they make of it? Like, what are the Dragon Gate lads thinking at this? Uh, <laughs> well, this set they seem to have a cracking time. So, like, right. you know, I almost feel like I have to give like a kind of like a potted history of like who right. they are. So, they are like effectively what was what was called Four FW down here, which they ran Oxford very rarely. The same venue which Cody Rhodes is going to be at. That I went to because we spoke about it on the podcast before. It was me, Joe, my t- um, uh, Tommy and Max, and uh, Joe's brother. And we thought originally we got tickets. Cody Rhodes was meant to be on it. We went there. There was about fifty people, most of whom were kids, who rushed the ring at the interval. Just started running in as well, like really <laughs> giving stick back. There were wrestlers, the likes of which are like Bubblegum was there. There was a hunter brother with a dodgy knee, just the, and lads like the Saints and Sammy Sahin and Tiger Ali, who those three lads are still there, like they're still around, but they just seem to have upped the fucking work rate in a completely quite wild direction. So I watched, I watched some cu- a couple of fucking cracking matches, and I'll give you they were up there with. So I'd imagine anything better that was on New Japan there as well, but it's. So it's like a family show with a bit of work, right? And but this is the company that brought in Kenny Omega. That would be how they'd be kind of more famously like this is him after the Tokyo Dome against Kazuchika Okada, like his first match. There he is, like he's in Swindon. So <laughs> they run these kind of like local shows, but you go to them, they're very family shows. They're not far like a you know in that Welsh wrestling vein. 
But for right. some reason, it, it seemed to really connect. And they're cheap mm-hmm. enough as well. So family of four, 40 quid, and nice. it's local. You don't get wrestling in Oxford very often there. I mean, actually saying that, there is a company that me and Joe went to called United Wrestling, which apparently they're selling out shows in the place where Joe had his wedding. At yeah, the that reception. Place, yeah. Which is kind of, I mean, you can't fit that many people in there, but like, you know, if you've got, you know, a canopy outside and the rest of it, you can get away with it. There. So there isn't much wrestling necessarily in Oxford. So it's like 40 quid for a family of four, 15 quid for adults. There's no, like, there are people who just brought their own beers as well. Like there was a few people, slightly like hardcore fans, and obviously we were keeping ourselves very quiet at the back. But you know they had a camera set up and stuff like. That. I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Like at some point, to yeah, there the presentation was absolutely like kind of cracking mm. there mm. as well. You could buy lucha masks for a, for a tenner each, <laughs> and the lads got one each, so they were perfectly oh, happy. That. With that as well. Two quid for a can of Coke, which I might add had it like, you know, in a, what was this? In a multi-pack. So I don't mind uh, that. I'm just looking at that entrepreneurship. Now, it didn't have like 59p on it, but it was like, right, you okay. know. Yeah. But so you know what? You sold That's half fine. a multi-pack type of yes. brand. On the one of those. Exactly that. Exactly that sentence there as well. <laughs> so it had all the family, like, kind of, all the stuff you would expect necessarily there as well. And that kind of mixture of families and the kind of few scattered kind of hardcore fans and the rest of it. Main thing, no? though. The picture here. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> now, in many ways, it looks like I've given him to someone who, like, if you told me that was like a can, he looks like a cannibal gimp in that photo, oh, doesn't he? Like uh, yeah. Shun Skywalker, bless him, for this. And I don't know what Charlie thought, and if this is a thought that's going to stick with Charlie for the the, the kind of rest of his life. But um, but yeah, it was like he absolutely like it was wild, and he came up to Vicky as well before. And I think she was off to change his nappy, and he came up to he's got yeah, a bloke in a mask came up, and he said about how like lovely Charlie looks, and it's like oh. he met him at the end as well. So yeah, uh, unfortunately Kakuda didn't there in it, but he does look like he's about to eat him because in some ways he looks like. Like a, he looks like a villain in a horror film in like sort of a low budget <laughs> costume, doesn't he? But for audio listeners, you'll see the the image will be in the uh, it will be in mm. the, uh, the show we'll producer here. If it's not, I'll yes, of course. Uh, but like Charlie's just looking at him like, what the fuck are you? Like Charlie's Charlie's. You mean all the wrestlers? He's the uh, he's the wrestler uh, whisperer at this point. So uh, he met, met Meltzer oh, and yeah. Alvarez. Now he's met Shun Skywalker. Who's next? You know, I love it. <laughs> I, he's working his way through the promotions here. Is Charlie, yeah. isn't he? If you think about like the six degrees of separation, he already gets to TNA through Danny Luna. Like, mm. you know, if we're thinking that as well, in terms of Shun Skywalker, I'm sure he's wrestled in other companies in Japan as well from time to time. So six degrees of separations. He's kind of cracked Japanese and American wrestling. Like he feels like he's, he's, he's almost there. Yeah, mm. Gets to Dolph, Dolph Ziggler. But it was as a show, like this is the thing about it. Like I'm sort of laughing up at the, the kind of family aspect of it. It was really good fun. It was two and a half hours. It ran on time. The matches, I have to say, Wild Boar was on the card. Um, and he was against Sammy Sahin, who's basically the Hogan of the territory. He used to have an afro, but he was the champion as well. And they had a match. So they were knocking shit out of each other. And I was like, this is kind of wild. Like, I wasn't expecting that. And I meant to say, attendance-wise, Joe did a count 200. Now, that's pretty decent by sort of Brit rest, small show standards. It's like, okay, that's, that's interesting. And they beat the shit out of each other. There was like, he did like a German suplex, Sammy Sane. He like landed on his neck. It was like kind of brutal. Mm. And it was like where someone like a wild boar who's been within a system can clearly like get good matches out of people. There were like some interesting kind of matchups. I don't know if you like Brian Kendrick against Chris Bronson, who was sat next to um, Joe, um, who Joe was talking to, told me he's an electrician. He was here. He, he came to see his son as well. I couldn't see yeah. non-league. In it. <laughs> like, well, like, that was it. There was Nico Angelo. Do you know him? Have yeah. you seen him before? Um, like he's um, been doing child and Freud and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So he was up against Tiger Ali, who is you know you might think of him as the Roddy Piper to Sammy Sahin's Hogan, like the territory. Mm. They're like the two absolute staples. And again, it was just like you could have put this on a more hip kind of indie and it would have been completely fine. 
Like it was two guys. Tiger Ali's been around like a while here as well, and Nico Angelo is, will have worked with a lot of people at this stage. And they had like a, a really good professional wrestling match without doing daft shit as well. So there wasn't like a ton of like kind of nonsense, but the crowd were like really into it. And you know, we're talking here that there were there were five matches on the card, and it was just over two hours main evented by Shun Skywalker and Madoka Kikuta, who I think at that match where the one Dragon Gate match I was like going to watch and think that put me off him because he got injured in a minute off like an arm drag and he fucked his arm oh. and they were in the main event and they did like a family match, like kind of all jokes and comedy for the first 10 minutes. And in the last 15, they just went into kind of puro mode without <laughs> again, killing each other, but having like, a really good match. Yeah. And it's, it's just like, okay, and this is their touring match and they're going around and they're doing like a few like kind of like spot shows in Redditch, Swindon. I think they're going out as far as Cardiff. And they're owned by like a, a women's wrestler. Like now it's mm -hmm. new ownership in, I think her name's Nadia Sapphire. Yeah. Um, and oh, yeah. yeah, like he, well, I think he's just like a staple of like kind of like independent yeah. women's wrestling around there as well. And it just like, it appears to be run really well and they've got mm -hmm. a good end to Dragon Gate. And they're Brian Kendrick and Brian Kendrick lost clean as well. Very, very skinny. Mm. I, he was slightly sort of all over the place of which Charlie also gave him some particular side eye as well. <laughs> Looking at him is like, ah, oh, okay. He was like, he said he was interested in going to see like John Locke and whatnot. And this was, this is when the lads for a fiver had a poster and they got it signed by all the wrestlers. And they got uh. upstairs in their bedroom. Like, you make it fun. Making That's fans. It. That's what you do. Will yeah. we go back? Absolutely. Back in May. Easy family entertainment. I've probably gone into it far too much. No, 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 it's good. It was it kind of reinstalled your faith at that kind of bottom level of wrestling. And you went, mm. actually, this was just oh yeah. Ho Ho Lun was on it. He was I do you know what? I thought it was completely fucking anonymous, to be honest with you. Like he was as he was in the Cruiserweight Classic. Like, yeah, like, for the GPW all on, ho ho on, uh, <laughs> unbelievably the way the other world works. But like I was gonna say, that was the thing, Joe. The, the one thing I, I asked yeah. you what he thought of the show. He, he said he basically said that he was like Brian Kedrick, probably was comfortably one of the worst wrestlers on the show. Maybe I'm putting words in as well, but like not even that he was bad, just that like the quality yeah. level elsewhere was was there when that wasn't necessarily what he was expecting either, obviously, aside from the uh, the Dragon Gate lads. So, no, it sounds, sounds like a good little uh, little day out. He's, we, uh, he's out there, like you say. Um, cheap one as well for the uh, fun for the whole family. Do you know what? That's the thing. If you look at the price-wise, nothing over 15 quid. Like, mm. And it was 15 quid when Alan, you know Alan, our mate Alan, who he was now, I think, starting even to get into the wrestling himself. Because on a whim, he was like, yeah, I'll come over. Something to do on a Saturday <laughs> night. Sit there and you just have like a, a really like kind of like perfectly nice time at the wrestling, but the work isn't, mm -hmm. it's not like cartoonish. Yeah. Like it felt like there was real proper craft and skill and graft in there. And mm -hmm. it's the kind of thing that we need, like we need those kind of shows to exist and for them to be set up for family. So you just hope they do well as much as anything mm -hmm. else. And Joe, again, if Joe didn't like it, Joe would make it fucking clear that he didn't like it as well. <laughs> And we came and we were like yeah, looking at each other. And we were just going, this was as, this was honestly, it's kind of made me think, well, I'm going to give United Wrestling a go. And there'll be some local companies around here and there'll be some people who are genuinely interesting. But if you get your chance and you get a couple of Dragon Gate lads over, you want to see a few other companies go, get them over here as well and split the fare and make it worthwhile. Even on that level, they seem happy with it. It's always, always one of my favorite stories. Just that, yeah, just Kenny Omega getting booked by, for FW or whatever, like to, way back in the day, it was like a, it doesn't feel like a real thing. That level of like stuff. Did Q and A, didn't they? Cody Rhodes was booked for them, wasn't he? When he went back mm. to uh, to do WWE right before, like uh, he ended up pulling out of the book one. But like, yep. like <laughs> a few weeks before him coming back to WWE, you could have you could have seen him in Swindon um, theoretically. Um, but yeah, apparently tenth of March for the show there as well. So uh, good, uh, yeah, for United Wrestling. So yeah, good, uh, good times. JP, we need to get more on the road reports, more live wrestling reports. So yeah, bring back the old days of British wrestling spotlight. You well, and we went to shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm game for it. If I've yeah. if I've one round fans in in like the rest of the family and they're game for it, and I think they kind of are as well. So I mean, 
the, yeah, the United Wrestling one, I don't, I think it's family friendly. I want to say that it is, even if it is in a brewery there as well. But yeah, that was it. Kenny Omega versus Tiger Ali and Swindon, as Ewan says here in the chat, was booked on the same night as a Rev Pro Your Call show. I remember because I was like, that Your Call show. And we were looking at each other, me and Joe, and going, why are we here when we could be watching Kenny Omega, who is like, you know, the greatest match of all time that I'd seen up to that point and would definitely be in the conversation of me, him and Okada. And it's like the next show he's on, Tiger Ali, Swindon. I'll tell you what, Ali would have got four stars out of Kenny as well. He's fucking, <laughs> what, a, what a worker, mate. Uh, to be clear, this is not Tiger Ali singing. It's a different Tiger Ali, just for, no. for anyone that are out there. Uh, he pisses all over t- Tiger Ali singing. He's much fucking better. And when they made a big deal out of him, fucking Ali was shite. Um, I was going to say, yeah, and on that note as well, yeah, being noted in the chat there, obviously. Yeah, well, I suppose we'll be on a Brit Rest podcast again. Yeah, uh, yeah Red Bull, but I'll back at your call, aren't you? Coming up, uh, as you and Mikey says mm. in the uh, the chat for the Revolution Rumble. That's uh, some good news that uh, that came out tonight. I know a lot of people are uh, oh. excited about. Unfortunately, the same day as a uh, a train strike from the north to south, so it's a bit of an issue for me. Um, but if you're down south, fucking great, uh, perfect. Uh, I'm sure I'll find a way to uh, to get there. So there we go. Brit Res, that's what we are. Every month we'll uh, we'll pull it out, JP, and on on a Brit Res. Oh, we're talking Brit Res. You know, ITV Saturday nights have got wow. a great um, British wrestling show on as we talked about. Last got the week. channel wrong again, there, mate. Is that a deliberate <laughs> one that you've done? I keep, it. I keep saying ITV Saturday night, BBC Saturday night. I'll give the cons credit. Uh, I did do that last week as uh, as well. It is on the iPlayer, but it's also on YouTube, JP. So you don't need to give the cunt your money if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> uh, well, like, <laughs> they give you that. They give you the traitors, as we discussed in the pre-show match yeah. of the day, mate. What more do you want of them? Come on. <laughs> More than three shows, probably, yeah. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we won't get into Brutal. the BBC conversation. No. Um, don't pay your license fee, folks. It's a waste of money. Um, anyway, JP doesn't endorse that. <laughs> Did you, I assume you watched the, the second episode. I've got probably less to say about the second one than the first one, but another great fucking Saturday night to TV. Next Saturday, speaking of rumbles, next Saturday night's going to be the one. Like I saw um, Connor on our, uh, our Discord, King of Discord, with his uh, chippy tea on Saturday night, sitting down to watch it. I was like, oh, next Saturday, that that is my plan, JP. I'm going to be sat there. Do you have a time and machine we- as well? <laughs> I'm gonna try and I need to pull out a pink echo. We used to have like a pink uh, sports paper in, uh, yeah. in Liverpool. We need to get need to get a copy of that, sit down with a chippy tea, watch gladiators. Unfortunately, there won't be any match of the day that night as uh, the Prem is in, uh, isn't back till the Tuesday after. But there is a Royal Rumble that night, which does also feel a little bit um, you know, 90s uh, childhood that kind of fits in for me and uh, in that like nostalgia yeah. vein. I'm gonna have a crack on Saturday night next week. It's back, mate. Saturday night prime time TV. Um, all, all it needed was a uh, was a bit of gladiators. I'm, I'm just, I can't believe how good it is. I can't believe how much they've nailed it. Like we said it last week, but it, they really have just brought it back and gone. Yeah, yeah. we're just gonna, we're not gonna reinvent the wheel. It's the majority of the same games, even down to the same music. Mm-hmm. They've just like creatively just nailed every element of it. In that, like, yeah, this was a great concept back then. It's a great concept now. Let's just do it again. And yeah, I thought the second episode was was, was as good as the first one. It's just great. Oh, it was absolutely outstanding. Like, I watched it. It was good tight contest as well. Classic gladiating oh, is yeah. the first thing that I thought with this. It was, it had everything to it as well. And a, and a dubious Mark Plattenberg decision sort of thrown oh, into the mix as well, which was... That I haven't let that go, by the way. Ah. Like, like, him being the referee, like, he is a heel in my house. Um, ask any of my uncles about... Most Bay. houses. You'll bring up the Clattenberg derby, mate. You, you, the one with... Uh, <laughs> Just the Phil Neville handball on the uh, on yeah. the line, and Gerard having a little word with uh, with Clattenberg, like all of that. Like, oh, what the fuck! David Moyes was outright calling him a cheat. He didn't ref. He didn't ref a match at Goodison again after that. I don't think. I think maybe in like later years, maybe eventually after like five or six years, he did do another one. But oh, hey, I hate him. I hate him with every inch of it, fiber in my being. But your tax is going on his wage now. Good. Sorry to turn 180 oh, degrees yeah, in the BBC was, conversation. <laughs> But no, he fits. He does. He fits. You know, it's, it's big, big shoes to uh, to fill when it comes to the uh, referee and the gladiators. Yeah, we did get a chance to talk to him last week. I was going to say about those, like it's the, the final bit. There's the only bit where it's like it, you realize what a work it is because you spend 50 minutes watching them try and beat beat each other in all these competitions to get what turns out to be like a three second head start that means yeah. nothing <laughs> when it actually comes to it. Not Every worth it. Minute, it's not, you get nothing out of it really. You might as well just sit it out until the, uh, until the main event, you know? Well, I noticed about you going straight to the main event with the travelator stuff. They're, they're all over the place on the ropes. 
Like they really were. That seemed to fuck things up. And if you're the second one to get onto the like the climbing rope thing, you're kind of fucked because that's going to sway all over the place, as you yeah. found in the women's one as well, as uh, Marie Louise absolutely stormed. Well, you thought it was going to storm to victory, and then it sort of got good at the end. It was good, like kind of baby face comeback. I thought from from Zoe, oh, yeah, Zoe the there in the end. Yeah, mm. like, and it was one of the things that, like, the travelator. It's like you say that the, the clear thing is the only thing they've added to this, mm. other than the Walshes, and we'll mm. get into them for different reasons. Again, is that backstage bit. Which I weirdly think, ah, oh, that's interesting. You could do something with that. I don't want them to go in a soap direct. And there's a part of me that fears that potentially happening in there. And then you well, could see, you wonder if yeah. they would do that. That's the only kind of reality show aspect of it as well. But the, the contestants got fucking good, mate. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, obviously, the standard of like, you know, everyone, everyone in there, you know, everyone knows somebody does CrossFit, don't they? You know, gyms are on every corner. It yeah. wasn't really the same in the 90s. Well, obviously, the people who did it were uh, good, but they were the exception rather than the rule, weren't they? It does feel like that way. Like, yeah, the, uh, the definitely is as good as the gladiators in, uh, in some ways. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought it's one, like you said about the backstage stuff, though. They're only doing it like once an episode. They're not overdoing yeah. it. There's not a lot of drama and like, at some point, you're right, they'll probably use that for some kind of work, as they should, because it, everything about it feels, I know it's a lazy comparison, it feels like wrestling, it feels like somebody with a wrestling mind is putting this together. Wrestling people, especially British wrestling people, should watch yeah. this one from the start, the presents through the gladiators as stars, the way they edit it, so you only see, like, the good bits, you know, when they come out and they do the poses, they've all got fucking entrance music, like, you start, we're starting... To get like more personality out of like the individual ones that Viper Cunt is like made for like Brit British wrestling. Like I like I said that on the Discord, I still can't believe like half of the NGW roster or like an Adam Maxted or somebody like that didn't somehow get onto the show. Like they must mustn't have applied because it's a pay it's tailor-made for one of these gladiators for like their little factoid to be like, you know, in real outside of gladiators, this is he's a professional wrestler who works up and down the country. Like it's it's right there for the taking, isn't it? But instead it's doing wrestling better than wrestling itself with, with no wrestling people it seems involved. That's the thing as well because I think the contestants are more likely to are more are definitely in this case doing more wrestling type of promos. Literally the worm in this case with mm. Marie Louise this week as well. And I was like, bloody hellfire. Because obviously I only got around to seeing it because I was out on, on Saturday at the wrestling. So I didn't didn't get to see it at all until tonight. And so I was like kind of slightly A astonished by like, you know, like I say, just how how the quality level kind of went up. It didn't feel like something that was like sorry, the quality level didn't drop, I should say. Mm. It was mm. and it was all pretty much exactly the same stuff. Just a little bit, a little bit more sort of character work from your gladiators. This way, I thought Legends, Legend. yeah, mm. like it's that understated heel. Viper is very much undercard heel, and he's not got the size. Mm. Let's face it, either it, yeah. on that gauntlet, mate, he was shit. He was, and there's no <laughs> two ways about it. He was fucking terrible. They breezed through him, John and Jake. Or wasn't mad on because he kept them doing a lot of kind of like what I thought were Kurt Angle style poses to try and get the reactions as well. Um, mm. it was John John had the backstory, didn't he? That's what he had into the mix. I'm really going into town on this. I, say, I don't know which one, John. Like, I'm just agreeing with you. <laughs> the ginger bloke. Oh, right. I think that was, was yeah, that was John. <laughs> uh, you're right. But no, like, I, I love the, like, say, I, I, I think Giants obviously got something about him. They're trying to wear. Uh, oh, yeah. Right now, aren't they? Like, the air uh, is. It's going proper 90s, the uh, the front page tabloids being like, Gladiator Star Giants in steroid scandal. It's like, I mean, in 2024, what? Like we, all, we all just know the old stuff. Like, we all know the rocks on I'm steroids. We all know when Hugh Jackman has to play Wolverine. Guess what he does when, you know, when the new Batman gets cast? Guess what Guess what happens next? They put on, like, uh, 50 pounds of solid muscle. I don't think anyone cares anymore. Hopefully that uh, that blows uh, blows away as the, uh, the that storm that it, uh, that it is. But, <laughs> God, yeah, yeah, it's like steroids. Yeah, I mean, I mean, on. what bear shits in woods, <laughs> like Pope Catholic shocker. Like, I mean, that's yeah. where you're into with this sort of territory. I, they're not going to get, they're not going to get any goodwill. They, they got a lot of people going, I don't give a fuck. Like, that'll be it. Like, like at this stage with it. But um, mm. it's, but I suppose 
it's going to be interesting to see, like, particularly for like from a wrestling perspective, if you're a promoter, mm. you've got a chance to get them in because there's so many of them as well. So they're not going to all be charging massive amounts of money. There's a lot of people on here who are kind of one and done appearances, and I just sort of almost forget that they're there and they disappear. Mm. It's like the gladiators. You can see them behind me as well. It felt like before, Andy, you only really needed to remember kind of four or five, and that was pretty much it. And you've got that same situation again where you've got your your four and five like kind of big stars, but legend on that cross run thing when he just really wasn't putting in a shift. I kind of I liked that. Like I thought that was kind of like distracted by the lights, mate. Probably here. Yeah. Oh, the sock. <laughs> like up the wall. <laughs> Fucking hell. They, get, they haven't changed yeah, the yeah. games around. Brilliant. No. Brilliant stuff. Can't wait for episode three. I don't know if it, that might uh, might sneak into the uh, the pre show. Little uh, plug there. Patreon.com is a scrapple. I imagine uh, Matty will want to talk in, uh, some more next week as well. Oh, yeah. I love it so far. I, I'm glad that I, you know, I don't think it's a very long season either. I don't think it's just there as well. It's just a great format. Let's keep it fresh, and then we'll uh, you know we'll do another season next year. But I'm gonna be watching every Saturday with me uh, with me chippy tea uh, with me pie and chips, a little curry on the side. Can't wait uh, for the Saturday. Um, yeah, it's gonna be uh, the Royal Scramble as we uh, as we said on the pre-show this Saturday. So can't wait. Before I, like the one real wrestling move that happened, I did make a note of it here. It was some crunching spears in Powerball at the very start. Like they were taking them fucking out. It was outrageous what they were doing. Like proper. Goldberg esque like Spears. Maybe should have done a jackhammer on top of one of those things as well. But maybe we'll get yeah. that in the quarterfinals or something. Fingers crossed. Uh, gladiators for points. Who knew? It works. But <laughs> on that note, yeah, talk some gladiators, talk some local British wrestling. I suppose we should get into the uh, the American stuff. Proper stuff. Yeah, uh, you know the uh, the non British listeners who uh, stuck with us uh, this time. Watch it. It's on YouTube. <laughs> it's a great, great show. Uh, should bring it all. I'm, I'm going to watch that Netflix documentary now. 100. percent We're meaning to uh, to get around to that the uh, the American Gladiators uh, documentary. Mm. But yeah, chat's loving it. Discord's loving it. If you're watching it too, you can catch it at uh, a patreon.com slash grapple or over on the uh, on the Grapple Discord as well. Um, speaking of which, yeah, I did a uh, mm. few things uh, go up over the uh, the last few days. JP, speaking of rumbles, we do have our uh, our Royal Rumble uh, flashback uh, review. Oh. We've been there, uh, brown people in content. Probably give that a proper push uh, this week in the uh, in the build up to the uh, the Rumble as. Uh, 2007 Royal Rumble did end up winning the uh, the patrons poll, so we got to have a good chat about uh, Cena and Umaga, didn't we? JP Undertaker and Shawn Michaels uh, at the end of that uh, Rumble 2007 as well. Great trip down memory lane. Got to look at uh, my love of a uh, 2006 SmackDown that I'd uh, forgotten all about. Mr. Kennedy MVP, all the stars that uh, that could have been, and a period oh. that yeah, massively familiar to yourself. Where I think you'd uh, maybe tuned out uh, a little bit. The, yeah. the, 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 so it was fun for uh, Matty to fill in some uh, some blanks for for me on the Raw side and uh, a view on the SmackDown side. Oh God, yeah, and I needed that. The last thing I was familiar about because obviously, as also you can get at the on the Patreon is our month one review of ECW on Sci Fi, which leads okay. in to this Rumble and it's part of it as well. So I was like, oh, okay, like mm. this is where it was at that point in time as well. And yeah, and the extremists are on the show, um, <laughs> but it was it was kind of great. I mean, we. We can't forget as well, we do get to talk about the other rumble, the bigger one that happened in 2007 as well, the, the one that you were involved in, mate. Um, in G GPW. <laughs> oh, as, comes of it, yeah. uh, it and, does come up. <laughs> and our love of rumble matches, which is good on the day that Rev Pro have announced they're doing their Revolution Rumble, which just makes me think, as soon as I hear that, I think, I mean, I want to watch that. Yep, a rumble match, can't go wrong with it as well. So, yeah, really good. Filled in loads of gaps for me. This is the if you're going to do the watch along, it's the John Cena Amargo one. So yeah, we we have that. Um, yeah, we've got, we've got that up up on the Patreon at the moment as well. We also have, and this is um, sort of early access, but I do want to say for it because it is going to be coming out uh, Sunday, um, free for everyone. But Retro Episode Three, Shaping Steve, um, mm. we're get to talking about. Um, uh, Brett's match with Steve Austin, but no, not the ones you're thinking about. There's another one that they go for there as well. Mm. And uh, big match at In Your House 13 Final Four. So it's like uh, brilliant mm. stuff. It's an, it's, a, it's an incredible series. So highly, highly recommend that if you haven't heard that, mm. definitely get that listened to. And that's also going to be on the YouTube, youtube.com forward slash at grapple, as well as the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash grapple. Um, 
What else have we got out on there as well? I, I would also like to push the Brock Year One King of the Mountain pick. If you haven't heard that yet, that's fucking glorious. Brock's first yeah. year and uh, what the Raw Rumble 2007 filling in gaps for me did that for for Gareth as well. So it was just like brilliant to kind of hear like the first time reactions to kind of Brock Lesnar going onto the main roster in WWE. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff this month. And yeah, we've got even, even more to come, mate. Definitely, yeah. So yeah, Bretro's currently uh, in uh, in early release for uh, for our patrons. They yeah. got it a few days early. Um, episode three, as uh, as pictured there for video viewers. Yeah, Super Bowl in South Africa is the uh, the Steve Austin match. I'm not sure I've actually seen that myself from September '96. Ever have. Yeah. Final four from in your house 13, as you, as you say as well. But yeah, that'll be uh, out early for patrons. It'll be up for the public on uh, on Wednesday on the uh, on the Grapple YouTube. And uh, you'll be able to get that uh, the audio for uh, for free as well. But yeah, on top of that, should say too as well, JP started uh, teasing it too. Should have uh, a yeah. time out uh, next weekend as well. People look forward to any, uh, want to give us any more hints on it? Uh, on what that is, there was a I... couple of uh, cool ones that have popped up on the, uh, on the Grapple Twitter so far that people have been, wow. uh, been working it out. Yeah, they have been working out. I mean, we had the first set of images. I'm going to be putting up another set of images uh, uh, throughout the show uh, on here. But uh, if you would have seen on it that we had uh, one, uh, probably a big favourite of yours. I don't know your feelings on Gary Ablett, uh, just to, to go straight <laughs> straight to him. We didn't realise, tragically, he's, he's passed away, like, which feels like kind of no age, because I remember him as a young bloke. But yeah, yeah, we, there's him, Phil Collins. Games Master, specifically Dominic Diamond, there as well, and a couple of I don't want to say who they're from because I, was, I think we're still it's still like that element of mystery of uh, of what year and what we're going to be covering. But there is going to be like a if you go over to the Twitter feed, you're going to see in the next few seconds a uh, another image pop, popping up on there of uh, four okay. different ones. So yeah, going to be yeah, just interested to interested to see what uh, what everyone thinks. I think I think I've worked it out from the uh, from the Gary Ablett uh, kit, but I genuinely don't uh, fully know me, uh, myself as well. So people figure out Gary Ablett's uh, Scouse Ryman slang for uh, for ecstasy tablets. Um, Gary, we uh, do some uh, go to the club, do some Gary Ablett. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm most special about you. Not make it down south though. <laughs> he didn't. No, I mean you have to imagine because he crossed the. Mer I'm assuming he's from Merseyside. Yeah, yeah. He had uh, to he be. Did. He's one of the ones who did both, isn't he? Um, he's uh, in the in the in the long tradition of uh, Peter Beardsley and uh, who else? Uh, uh, oh, uh, Xavier wasn't it? Xavier, remember him? Um, he was another one. Uh, there's a few of them who uh, who crossed the path. But I was a fan back in the uh, the day. Fan of that kid as well. NEC uh, kid for uh, for Everton was uh, was definitely a, a classic. So yeah, that, that's what was missing on me back today. I was saying that like, it kind of fits into what I was saying with the uh, the gladiators plan on a Saturday night. Need a bit of Daniel Amakachi as well and. Uh, I'll be writing, but no, can't wait for you guys to uh, to pop that one out. And yeah, the, the teasers, as you say, will uh, will continue uh, over on the Twitter as well. So uh, get followed us over there if you want to uh, figure out the uh, the riddle uh, for yourself. <laughs> Can't wait uh, to see what you guys have uh, have got up your sleeves for that one too. Um, but yeah, I think that's is that it as far as the uh, the plugs go, JP. Uh, I think that's I think pretty much most. Possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to say that 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 name again, Mister Plow. No, Patreon.com forward slash Grapple. <laughs> on that note, we should get into uh, the stuff uh, going on uh, from this week. And yeah, we'll start with uh, mm. a little bit of uh, AW to, uh, to talk, uh, JP. Um, was, uh, you know, we'll catch up uh, over the weekend, got AW to talk, but a New Japan to talk with the uh, the Carder news that we uh, we talked a little bit about, speaking of the Patreon, on the uh, on the Grapple Weekend show on Friday. Mm -hmm. His uh, first impact under the new uh, new name um, to talk about this week, as well as a few uh, WWE notes as well. But... We'll start with AEW, um, as yeah, we did uh, as well as a uh, collision and a uh, and rampage happening over the weekend. JP to get a little bit of a uh, quite uh, interesting news as uh, as Tony Khan announced the return of the AEW ranking system. Um, we don't mm. really know what it's going to look like yet. Um, I had a little look today, JP, of the. Uh, the uh, the AW uh, rankings website not been updated since 2022. Um, it just at some point somebody just stopped updating it. It's got like Thunder Rosa as the women's champion. I think FTR are the tag champions maybe. Um, <laughs> at some point the webmaster just stopped getting clued in by Tony on 
what had actually happened with the rankings and whether they still existed or not, which is a very AW way to uh, to do things. But apparently they're coming mm. back. Um, and Tony Khan did say, yeah, coming back going forward, starting this month, um, obviously with it being uh, January, the beginning of amazing 2024, um, big, uh, big Tony uh, did say. So a lot of... Uh, Rejoicing, I think, from the uh, from the the the, the fans of uh, of uh, of of such things in AEW, and you could spot maybe the uh, the grifters um, among uh, the fan bases, or you know the people who pretend to not understand the uh, the uh, the continental classic uh, standards. They're gonna have a, a lot of trouble with it with the league table uh, in wrestling. Got a lot of those people uh, coming out saying how much the uh, the hate it. Uh, we did also get a, a bit of a report as well saying that uh, apparently the reason it it ceased existing. As as with a lot of uh, the bad things that happened in AWJP, apparently we can uh, we can blame CM Punk for that one. Uh, apparently it was at, uh, a Punk uh, <laughs> move. Apparently lobby for uh, for Tony Khan to uh, to scrap the uh, the AEW rankings. Uh, apparently uh, his he used his influence to, uh, to 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 put it through. Obviously we had that. I think. To be fair, I think a lot of the uh, the reason they did go away was probably FTR, um, as those are there and they're uh, they're complaining across 2022 when they were like the number one contenders technically for the tag team titles for a ridiculous uh, amount of time and kept bringing it up on Twitter and kept bringing it up on Twitter until basically uh, the rankings uh, just went away. But yeah, apparently it was uh, apparently Brian Alvarez is the one who's uh, broken the news that it was a uh, punk that talked him into uh, to getting rid of it, but. They are back, JP. Um, and I, I don't know mm. what you you make of it. Is it is it a, is it a new story? You immediately uh, react to positively, negatively. I would say I'm a little bit mixed. I understand the positive reaction. I think I I share some of those feelings. I think there's a lot of uh, mm. AW adjacent stories that come out have come out over the last two months where we're all in a rush to be like the feelings back. AW's back. We're going back to the old days. There's obviously, very clear positives there. But yeah, um, whether they can actually stick the landing on it because. I'm not sure the 100% did last time uh, might remain to be seen, but your reaction to it? So this is this is something I've been kind of calling for oh, I like, for a while. So like, I'm positive about the idea of it coming back, but like you, I'm like, okay, in order for this to work, do you know what it kind of requires? It requires organisation and planning and not getting bored of it straight away. Like otherwise, this is just as 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 much importance of brand splits had to me for fucking years on end. My initial reaction was I was generally more positive. I kind of wasn't surprised because I know before World's End, he did say that he was wanting a more sports based presentation. That was something that he'd been talking about himself. And I've made the point that when it comes to TV rights fees and everything else, what you Neat, like what is the hot program on TV? If you want to think about where like popular culture is, well, the popular program on TV is sports. That's what's mm. popular, because and you know even gladiators, as we spoke about, either there's a competition element. There's finalists. You know what I mean? There's yeah, mm. obviously there's sports entertainment well along the way, but mm. ultimately there is an end game, and you know where you're going to. And I mm. think for this, if you do it right, and then uh, there's a million other ways you can kind of like fantasy book. What it adds is a series of like, well, there are reasons for matches happening, which quite often they just fucking isn't. And mm. you can have these rankings, but they need to go deep. Like, you know, there's lots of things I hate about UFC at the minute, particularly just the way it's just become this fucking horrible MAGA cult and, and everything else. But the thing oh. that they have is, say, top 20s. So there are reasons for fighters to exist, and it's about moving up the card. And so they have their own personal stories. And you see this happen in every professional sport because the money they're paying out, they kind of want it to be a soap opera. So they've managed to kind of they do this for everything. The Premier League does it. Like, it's all about the fucking narratives. Like, the narratives, the rivalries, and everything else that goes in along the way. So tapping into that, I think, is a good move for them from a business perspective. And if you're trying to shop this as a product, mm. we've got to... And I think what we've seen, and if you look at attendances and ratings and general critical kind of feedback when they've done the sports entertainment stuff, how good has that fucking been? Mm. You can argue they should just be doing it better and that perhaps is wrestling. But on a personal level, I think wrestling can go in this direction, but it requires a lot more organisation than someone like me would ever be capable of. It requires a whole series of people to be kind of in charge of it and like an almost like a hands-off approach. Dana White, Generally, booking UFC is never like a good idea. That's why, you know, there's other people like Sean Shelby and stuff who do those kind of jobs as well. And they put together yeah. like kind of money matches. 
And I think that's that's something that WWE don't do. So it differentiates you from that as well, which is the other thing. If you want to look different and do that. So that there for me, I kind of look at yeah. it in a more positive way. Are they going to stick the landing? Sadly, probably not. <laughs> this <laughs> is the thing. It's, it's, it's like it's a, it's a, it's an it's an obvious like it's a win for like the hardcore fans to be like, okay, we won the battle. We tried the sport, like you say, we tried the sports entertainment route to mixed results towards the end of last year. We had a couple of horrible ones towards the end of last year. We've come out the other end, and it seems like at least on face value. Tony Khan has understood the part, the, the value of having like a prize fighter champion like Samoa Joe as your world champion. And um, you know, last week's Dynamite quarter hour was definitely encouraging. Um, and the quarter hour the week before when they were setting up the champ the, the challenges in the Joe segment, encouraging for that style of like the world title is important and it's about you know the athletic contest of the match and all of that stuff. Big win for us, I think, in general as those types of fans. And yeah, that that's where I'm I'm kind of excited about. I think it's the the idea of it. That I'm totally with everyone on, but what you've nailed there is yeah, it's the execution of it where a struggle. It's 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 Tony Khan <laughs> being able to follow through on this. It's but it's also as well me your understanding as like a long term ROH fan who in their early days tried to have like the honor roll and all kinds of different methods to have like a, a ranking system, and none mm. of them ever stuck and none of them ever worked because it, it always ended up with you know confusion or you needed that i think james you said that on twitter rightly this week you know you there's going to be weeks where you're going to need somebody to be in a match or you're going to need a, someone for joe to, to face and it's not always going to make perfect sense with the rankings and it all bookers always run afoul of it because of that and almost gabe sapolsky did it like three different times lost interest mm -hmm. um in, in, in having it and i think that's what happened with tony khan in, in 2022 it basically just became too hard so you've got to kind of thread the needle of doing two things. One, keeping it credible so you don't have a situation like what happened with FTR where it did get ridiculous, where it was like, yeah. at some point they've got to get a title shot here, lads. This is getting silly. But then at the same time, give yourself as a booker flexibility to still be able to, you know, have like a random dynamite main event that maybe doesn't make perfect sense with the rankings, but makes as much sense as you rightly say, JP, as a UFC set of rankings, or I don't want to bring boxing up, but you know what I mean? Rankings in real sports. Yeah. Maybe I won't include boxing in a, in the, in that comment, but you know, where yeah, there are there are times where it's great for, for getting you're a contender, and then there's times where you know you can use it loosely and like the number five ranked person can theoretically get a title shot. Can AW pull that off? It's a really tricky balance and act i don't think they did towards the end of it last time maybe if like maybe this ends up being like will you will uh, william rbr where uh, will washington's uh, uh job full-time to just keep track of this doesn't feel like a jimmy jacobs job but somebody like that no. lucky garner backstage or something like that you know doing the uh the ghetto with a whiteboard job to kind of figure this out and figure out all these personalities it just involves a degree of planning and forethought where it's like it's a really good idea but to execute it You've got to think it through and get it yeah. right because it'll just go the way it did last time. And I, like you just said, then you might struggle to do it. I would struggle to do it. I think Tony Khan struggled to do it last time. It's a very, very hard thing to pull off. So it, I maybe lean more negative on whether mm. they actually can do it, <laughs> even if I do think in principle it's a good idea. It's And that's such a shame, isn't it, that we don't really have the faith because it doesn't look like they've got the kind of infrastructure in place to do this because it, it almost requires like a team of people behind a kind of central booker because mm -hmm. you have to like if you think about the way kind of ufc works it's not always that obviously the number one contender who gets the championship fights there are almost like an unseries of rules where it's like well if you just had a match and you've lost you don't kind of get the next one we want to put someone else in there for a variety there are people who aren't particularly great fighters but they're characters and so they become fun on tv and guess what they get higher profile matches so there's almost a reason from a wrestling perspective for people to act weird Almost like, well, this is why Tony Storm is how she is, because it gets her on TV, because that's kind of what they're fighting for. They're fighting for prominence within this company and then to win the championships and the rest of it. That's why an arsehole like Colby Covington gets fucking like main events of pay-per-views, even when he's kind of proven that he's not at that top level, like mm. in a in a particular division. And and it's like the easiest way of kind of behaving. And, and you and they can do it. I also wonder whether or not. And, you know, to move away from the UFC sort of side of this, when you look at these kind of rankings as well, you're going to need rankings for those smaller belts. And I'm kind of fine with that. I think if then you've got a higher, this is where it gets bigger. Do you have a hierarchy of titles then? And you need to do something about 
merging those titles and the rest of it and getting That's rid of that is that is the problem because they're not weight divisions so they're kind of arbitrary at that stage do you you would normally think the international title would be based on say experience so it's a young guy's title or whatever but that's not like i don't know like it's tough isn't it because it, it, it gets weird last, time, last mm. time they only had the world title and the tnt title to consider on the on the men's side like obviously there was a tag division that had zone rankings. We've got the trio yeah. titles now. Where do they fit in? Do they have their own rankings as well? Like the, there is almost the FTW belts knocking around. You've got like they say the internet maybe the international title could be an unranked belt that sits separate from all this. Mm. But you have to figure it out, JP, because like that that it that does make it ten times tougher. The fact that they've got yeah. so many more belts than they did before. Um, like how how do you right? There's no weight divisions, there's no clear delineation between who gets a TNT title shot and who gets an international title shot and who gets a world title shot. They're pretty much going to be the same rankings, aren't they? So it's it's tough. ROH title even? Like, is, is the rankings for that too? Like, yeah. Or do you just have one big set of rankings where you go, there's a top 50 and in order to move up, you just got to beat people who are ahead of you. And some of them have got their own belts, but they're not the world belt. So that's the ultimate goal. Do you do it that way? That might be the easy way out of it. And I could be completely overthinking it, as I, as I would expect on here as well. But I think sometimes in a way, like you can have the potential then for kind of upsets and shock contenders and stuff like that. And people kind of developing angles. Because again, you see it in kind of, of other sports and, and everything else. But it, yeah, just like I say, it requires like a level of organization. But I think there's also the bigger thing here behind the idea of, sports-based product and ranking systems is there's a very clear kind of admission that the way that they've gone, like you yeah. said earlier on with the sports entertainment, it's not worked. It's not worked. And it's not particularly popular because if you want to see that, why wouldn't you just fucking go and watch WWE? Like yeah. the thing that we've always argued about that TNA have kind of very, have never kind of got and lots of other promotions as well. So you go down this route of which just popped into my head do you know what I did kind of like? And it wasn't very complicated, but a way of having like a, an unofficial ranking system in New Japan. Bloke had a big win, just came out at the end of the night, challenged the world champion after or the champion of whoever when he defended his title. It was an easy enough setup. Obviously, I think you that can was add some UFC a bit of... back in the day, wasn't it? UFC. It was. I used to listen to Alvarez and uh, Melton every radio show. Be like, why would you just? Why would you just when when you get a big win, call somebody out? Um, in the end, that becomes diminishing returns, doesn't it? Because you can't book every one of those matches. But yeah, that that's a got a way of oh, possibly doing it. Personally, I would lean more towards like honestly, I've never seen a better mo better model in wrestling. They did a lot wrong, a lot wrong. But what Shikara did right was having three wins and you got a title shot. It was as simple as that. That was their ranking system. Mm -hmm. Three wins in a row, you got a tag title shot if you were a tag team. Three wins in a row, you got a, a title shot to like for the, for the, in the singles division, depending on what the belts were at any given time. Like how straightforward is that? Just do that. <laughs> that could that could be a way to do it as well. It's, <laughs> It's one of them, isn't it? I I, I don't think we're going to be able to... I, that's the thing. If I'm cri critiquing this, I'm not saying it in a way that I'm like, well, I, I could solve it. You've got such a big roster with so many belts, with so many yeah. TV shows. I'm not 100% sure anybody could crack it. And that's why I land like that, JP. I land in, like, in mm. principle for the for the, for the cheering the sports-based product. I like this as an idea, and I'm going to be cheering it on the open it works. The realist in me, do, do I actually think it'll work? Do I actually think you can pull it off? That's when I've got more about that. But I'm rooting for it, absolutely. Yeah, and I think it's just that admission of perhaps that's the kind of, it's the one thing they can do to differentiate themselves. Plus, with the added bonus of what's making the most money in TV rights, sports. So yeah. take a bit of what they do. But I also think that could go wider into how wrestling is prevent, presented overall, which is a much bigger kind of conversation and, and everything else. It's it's like I say, I think it's it's just more that you at least get a positive direction from it. And at least then there's logic. Because I think that's the thing that's really like it makes that makes me angry with wrestling at times. It's when it just doesn't make any fucking sense. And it just gets weird for weird sake. And it's just like uh, okay, all right. Like after a while, that that just becomes like kind of like tiresome. And, and AW when it went down that sports entertainment path was something I was just like, oh god, like this is there's always this like shit bit of the TV, and it does feel like with no MJF at the minute, there's like a cloud that's kind of lifted from this as well. I'm probably, yeah. Maybe we're just D mob happy and we're so excited because Joe's got the belt. Things are a bit more serious, and guess what? It makes for fucking better telly. <laughs> you can't argue with it. We said that about. Like Dynamite, you mentioned it with with the hook match. 
Like that was mm. like you kind of think that was like a, almost like a sports a sports based kind of product for it of like a massive underdog coming up against someone good, but they've got they've had like a decent record that's been kind of padding out by beating kind of scrubs, but you put him in there into a main event. So at least then like and that sounds like I'm defending Tony Khan's fucking madness, getting angry about it. But at least then I think that's simple that's a simple story to kind of mm. say, or if you took your idea, let's say you have to win five matches to get a title shot. If you're putting up simple promos, it's just like they've won four matches in a row. If they win this match next week, they get a title shot. You've given stakes to a match without really doing anything, other than booking them for fucking four other wins. Like it's that's, that's not rocket science, yeah. is it? Yeah, that's the issue with wrestling in general, isn't it? After matches on TV, it's like if you actually sat there and thought about while these matches are happening, it's like, um, you know, Premier League Saturday just being filled with friendlies. After matches you see on TV, just exist to exist, don't they? You actually stop yeah. to use your brain for a minute. Man. Hang on, why is Jeff Hardy facing Darby Allen? Actually, I don't know. <laughs> What's it for? Don't know. <laughs> They're just having a match. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of that, isn't there? And, uh, and you could you could make a lot of it make more sense. But like, I, it's funny, I was literally about to make the same point. I've just read that and got it on screen because Elliot saying the same thing. They don't have dark anymore. That is a worry too because they always had dark where I, I, mm. it, it just popped into there when you were saying about five wins in a row. That was easy to do when you could give, put four of them on. You know, Moxie could just randomly go do dark and dark elevation for a couple of weeks in theory and come out with more wins than he had already. And you haven't got that anymore. So it's another reason they're going to have to be, you know, grown-ups about it and think these things through. Um, and people are going to have to do jobs. But that, mm, like, that's the thing that's the other part of this of which people have to do jobs. And I think it's a good thing. And I think mm. it's a much better idea than people like, like say with boxers having r records padded out. The one thing, again, I've always liked about MMA is, is people have lost. And there's a story of how people respond to losses and come back and the rest of it. Sure. There's, there's your narrative. Mm. There's your character. Oh. And there's a reason oh. why they go bad then in that case, isn't it? It's like simple. Mate, oh. we've cracked it. We've cracked wrestling. Brilliant. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Hook can have like you know not not it doesn't have to go full Naito where it's his obsession for the next three years, but part of his character going forward can be like yeah you know I want to get back to that point again and next time you know uh, Samoa Joe isn't gonna isn't gonna beat me I'm gonna win next time you know uh, yeah kind of there Miro's fucked and he <laughs> wins and losses start to uh, start to matter yeah. But yeah. Um, there is the stories to, to be told in it and loss, absolutely. And with him now, we saw that with well, we not as much as I would have liked, but we saw that with the Continental Classic, and maybe yeah. um, lessons have uh, been learned from that as well. Mm. But on that note, um, do you want to talk the, uh, the TV from the uh, the weekend, JP? You've got to say, we like you, as you alluded to there, we were if people haven't seen it, the our, our dynamite review as normal is up on the uh, YouTube mm. for free for everybody. You can uh, go and watch it there if you want more elongated uh, dynamite thoughts from last week. In short, fucking. One of the greatest, one of my favorite dynamite matches of all time was uh, was Joe and Hook in the uh, the main event of that. And they gave us uh, Dustin and Christian as well. It was at a, a cracker of a dynamite last week, even if there was some stuff in the uh, the middle I didn't love. But you know, great Briscoe segment uh, as well. Obviously, very uh, yeah, touching uh, all of that stuff. We talked that too. No, what we didn't talk about when we talked about dynamite. JP, I only realized it when uh, when it came around to collision and rampage. You mentioned it there. Um, you know, we've almost forgotten about the MJF first. Um, Adam Cole and his gang of mid carders. <laughs> Like, we didn't talk about them coming out of Dynamite, did we? Uh, don't feel like, like talking them uh, coming out of Collision either, but could that stable be more defined down at this point? Like, I saw like, Roddy Strong and Matt Sardell on Collision. I was just like, I mean, the old school ROH fan of me uh, enjoys this, but like, you know, and saying that the uh, the, the, the man who, uh, who organized the, the ROH push back in the day enjoys this too, as uh, way back when uh, they were uh, they were two of the main characters on that uh, on the bus trip with them too. But probably the two of them all hung over wrestlers too, Matt Sidell uh, and Roddy Strong. Um, one of them lost the phone, I found it. It was a whole awkward uh, exchange, but um, cracking gang of lads. Um, didn't expect to be in 2024 watching them on, uh, on mainstream uh, <laughs> TV here. And I'm, I'm glad to see it. Come to see uh, the lads get away but i don't know Roddy strong came out for his match and like obviously they had the back there was the backstage segment with there uh, with adam cole over on dynamite and stuff and it was just like oh god this feels like the fifth or sixth most important thing happening in the company if that and you know what maybe i'm glad mm -hmm. of it um, <laughs> you know we didn't even think to talk about it when we reviewed dynamite which is a really good sign because mm. as soon as I think, as soon as like we had the end of the world's end, like mm. I was, I think it was just it was like no, absolutely hated it, but it was over. This horrible storyline which I hated that, that we'd we'd all hated for weeks on end, and it felt like bloody years at a point. 
And it was just like literally in the case of Adam Cole, Roddy Strong skits, the same thing appearing week after week. You just go, am I going mental? I, have I not seen him just screaming and getting him to be a slave and the rest of it? And it feels like it's such a bad idea. And it's kind of like it's been overtaken completely by the heat of Paige and Swerve Strickland. So it's completely that is like a good serious storyline between like a former champ and an up and comer has completely like captured people's imaginations. The champ is Samoa Joe, as mentioned earlier on here in the chat, is a grown up champ. And therefore, you kind of get grown up storylines around him, but not doing daft shit, which is great. The problem with that that stable is it's already sort of split off into two. It's Roderick Strong in the Kingdom, as it always is, and he's going after the inter international title, which is what is it? Is it? I don't know where the rankings of the titles are because obviously this Orange Cassidy reign is not like anything like the other reign that we had. Yeah. That was great. It's a brilliant job establishing it for a pay per view main event. It's nothing like that now mm. so it's like it feels to me like fourth behind the world tnt and the whatever the fucking triple crown is at this point i'm not even sure week to week oh yeah there's that too forgot about that one yeah. all <laughs> three of them i know he completely <laughs> ruins it and it's like why do you need just just make it into four belts like at this stage oh. that's what you need to be doing is unifying all of these these things together but yeah that's you know th- th- these are the kind of things that i think you know as a I've got me lost my train of thought there for a second in, in all of these bloody tiles. I'm getting all angry about it, mate. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'll, for for collision and rampage, I was going to ask uh, some highlights and uh, and lowlights of you. We'll start. We'll start with collision. Um, I, you know, Moxley and Shane Taylor was decent enough. Um, mm. One of those matches where uh, Moxley's given. Shane Taylor's one of them people who he, he appears on TV once every six weeks or so or six months or so, depending on uh, on the year. And I'm like, oh, he's good, Shane Taylor. I remember, uh, remember liking Shane Taylor, and then I don't see him again. Um, good show against Moxley, though. Maybe they're gonna uh, gonna do more with him on the on the TV. Um, and if you have any thoughts on that, Adam Cole Dante Martin was a similar type of match as well. And as we carried on the uh, the Cope Open um, uh, that that, uh, that continues mm. on. Uh, Dante Martin just feels a little bit like it's like oh well, it's Dante Martin it wasn't as like you know as exciting as uh, some of the uh, the names they've been dusting off for the uh, the Cope Open so so, so far yeah you know, it seems to uh, seems a very uh, traditional spot for him to to come out for a match like this but I continue to be half interested in that that kind of was the the majority of the first half of the uh, of the show for uh, for Collision this week as we uh, and Thunder Rosa obviously Queen Amanita thought was uh, was solid as well. It feels to me this is the thing about this show. Like you said, the word is solid. When I watch, this is always like uh, I sound like a broken record. When I watch Collision in the main, I generally like it. However, what show is all the main stuff happening on? It's Dynamite. I was thinking all the stuff that involves like the world title. It's Dynamite. It's always held off for Dynamite. The kind of bigger storylines. It's Dynamite. The John Moxley appearance was kind of the classic. We're going to put John Moxley on the show. He didn't really say anything after like in his. Like promo afterwards, he's going to beat some people up. I'm sure we've been down this road many, many times. Like after beating Shane Taylor, who again, there's a place for him, could fit into it. I don't see the reason why him and Lee Moriarty just aren't a tag team, go kind of like old school in some ways, and just have him as a as a, as a tag team and almost like kind of be done with it. Mm. And the Adam Copeland stuff, I almost feel like there's a there's a degree of novelty value because it's not Christian Cage that he's involved in, and it's not like a kind of a ultra serious storyline it's it's something it's, it's a bit lighter and yeah. i think when after seeing him in wwe where he was doing it was all very serious stuff for ages sometimes a bit lighter it's just a nice change of pace i'm enjoying and it. i think yeah and i think that's why i'm not like hating those matches and i think like i'm kind of like in, enjoying them as well and so that's the thing with this there are things on here that i enjoy but it doesn't feel like it's the top line stuff it makes it feel like it's kind of positioned as a b show and let's face it, we talk about the ratings on our various updates. Guess what? They're getting B show ratings. There's the difference between Collision and Rampage and Dynamite is quite substantial. And we're getting quite clear at the point Dynamite is twice as popular most weeks yeah. than Coll- than no shows. Literally. Collision and Rampage are basically the same at this point, aren't they? Pretty much. Uh, you, you show me both ratings, and I'll struggle to tell you which one is uh, which. Other than the fact that one is at a two-hour show and the other is one. Yeah, it, it's slotted at a certain level, but you know, yeah, it 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 it's kind of like 
it's almost disposable TV at this point, isn't it? But mm. it's not like you say, not without its merits. I, yeah. I like Thunder Rosa Queen Am Amanita as well. Continue to really like uh, Queen Amanita as, a, as somebody as like an extra, you know, extra yeah. body in that women's division who, who's got a little bit of something that they might be able to go with at some point. Good to see Thunder Rosa back. Always one of the uh, the better performers in the uh, in the women's division. Uh, presumably, uh, she won't be uh, lining up against Britt Baker at any point. Remember Britt Baker? Remember her in the women's division? <laughs> remember they remember they got someone over in the women's division, JP, and then. Stop using yeah. um, <laughs> I presume she'll be back too at some point. Where the fuck um, is she? I assume she was off TV for the you know for the Adam Cole MJF story. She was going to be part of it. Nope, just off telly. Um, <laughs> she's over, so let's not use her. Uh, my guess was uh, was the logic. Uh, that's a weird one, isn't it? Um, what else was on the show? Oh, they continued on this weird line with the um, the six man titles, Bullet Club Gold and and the Gun Club. Uh, uh, sorry, Bullet Club Golden, they acclaimed. I don't really understand what's going mm. on there. Like, why, what, k kayfabe reason, why Jay White would be entertaining the idea of joining up with those lads. Like, it's not even like they're necessarily going after Adam Cole and, you know, the, the devil and all that stuff. It just is a weird side story with them. Just, I guess they're going to, maybe they're going to merge the six, the ROH six man belts and the trios belts. I live in hope. Maybe that's where where that is heading, and they're not actually all going to team up. But that continues to be weird use of uh, of Jay White. I do think yeah, after the Continental Classic, I would have thought Jay would have got like a a prominent singles pr uh, program instead of whatever this is yeah. <laughs> going on right now. But mate, yeah, he's gone from been... main eventing a pay per view to mm -hmm. being in the Ring of Honor six man tag champions. I'm mm -hmm. being quite happy with that. That's not a place that you really want to be, is it? You are really settling for less there. I thought the immediate thing was, I thought, well, maybe at Revolution, they're merging the belts, which then makes you kind of think, well, yeah, you don't need two sets of trios titles for one. That seems absolutely, like, pointless for that. But mm. just have them just say, yeah, we're going to merge the title. They've got a shared history between them. They could be mm. playing this straight, and instead they're doing this, like, kind of the super faction stuff, which... It would be really that's what we need. A massive another massive faction there bang, in the company. Gang. Bang bang scissor gang. Like I don't and it's, Simon's not happy about it in the chat as he points here. Hate, hate, hates the bang bang scissor gang shite. I don't hate it as much. It's just weird the transition of Jay White to babyface, which yeah. has happened on here. I mean, it's presumably there'll the, be a big yeah, there'll be a big yeah. turn and beat down at some Has point. Or just a strange program. It's a bit of a waste be, um... of time, isn't it? Ultimately, it's just like who cares well, about it? But... That's how I felt about the main event. Like, but, mm. you know, you know my thoughts on the back. It's similar to what you said about Moxley in the opener. Like Claudio and Danielson against Ortiz and Eddie Kingston. For one, I'd have Santana in there instead of Ortiz. Like, because uh, he could play this Ortiz role, but actually have. Like, is Ortiz ever going to be anything in AEW as a single act? Of course he's not. Of course he's not. Like, if he got, if he if he left the roster tomorrow, I don't think anyone would notice. But as Santana, you could plant some seeds. You could turn heel on Kingston at some point. There's so there's so clearly so much more with that lad. He's another bizarre one that he's just disappeared off TV. Maybe it's the uh, the an attitude problem thing or whatever. Um, but I much prefer him in that role. But that aside, I found it a really weird main event. It was on paper a good match, in execution a good match. But it's like, well, I feel like the Eddie Kingston stuff with Claudio and Danielson, we've done it now. It happened. He got the win against Danielson in the Continental Classic and the Claudio match, we had the payoff to that too. So why are they back to bullying him again? And like, I'm so, this is this is my entire problem with the Blackpool Combat Club. Feel free to fast forward if you're sick of me moaning about it. But like, Dan, uh, Danielson, I know you didn't uh, catch the very end of the show, but Danielson mm -hmm. spits at Eddie Kingston and that's supposed to be like a big moment. Like, oh, he's, he's disrespecting Eddie Kingston. It couldn't be more cosplay because we all know Brian Danielson's a nice fella. Like we're this this is the thing with Danielson. <laughs> he enjoys doing this stuff. To, this is fun. Him like it's like I'm working Butlins back in the day. Him spitting at Eddie Kingston and doing that I don't respect you thing is him having the time of his life. And that's because that's if you gave him the choice, he'd probably choose to do this and be like, Oh, that, that's great stuff. Man. Nobody watching it is believing that Brian Danielson is like this gobshite who spits on people and is part of this hard man Blackpool combat club. Thing. It just doesn't fit. Like this is a, one of the many, the twenty-seven reasons I've got why Danielson should be separate from Blackpool Combat Club, and basically it shouldn't exist in the first place. But add on the fact that it's it's about Eddie Kingston again. It was like really we're going back to that. Like I feel like that story was told. I feel like Danielson, you know, Kingston got the win, and that's the end of the story. Like brilliant, Kingston earned some respect, and we move on. 
instead I guess we're doing something again with <laughs> with Danielson and Eddie Kingston and the you know hard man Blackpool combat cup stuff. I just yeah, D Danielson will probably be. You know, a laugh in the match, yeah. If he goes full holiday camp style, as Simon says, there, I'm sure he'll have he'll enjoy doing it, and there'll be moments of the match I really enjoy. But I'll still come out of it going, eh, in Brian Danielson's last active career as a wrestler. I, yeah, I, I feel like I, I could get some more money out of Brian Danielson. I feel like I could have him in some, you know, big matches that you know aren't ones we've already done. Um, there's limited time here, and you know, one of the uh, one of the biggest stars in wrestling over the last ten years, which you can't forget Danielson is when he's kind of buried as one man in a stable. Um, is maybe you're not getting your money's worth. Do a, do a fucking sting match. Do something. Do something a bit more, a uh, bit more fresh. Than I think uh, away from all this shit. There's so much other more interesting stuff that he could be doing, and he's not doing it in what we're told is his last year as an active wrestler, which should be something you use as a marketing push, rather like guess what? It's kind of working for Sting in quite like you know looking at the numbers that they're doing, and it's like and it has an effect in the build up to the to the Revolution show as well. Like I say, I didn't get to see the match and part of the reason i was like when i saw the promo i was just like i was like very confused it's like has he forgotten kind of who he is this is it it's just like when it's when the character doesn't make really any sense on tv these are the kind of the basics you go back to and yeah i i'm it's with like you on it's an old big card talking point just it because is. a rapper wants to do something doesn't mean they're right. Yeah. Like, we we lived through 20 years of Vince McMahon and DDB, and the, the, the smart fan talk complaint was, ah, these wrestlers shouldn't be scripted. They should get to say and do whatever they want. Not all the time. <laughs> Sometimes no. you need someone to go, you know what, Brian? You're one of the biggest stars in wrestling history. Let's just make you a big baby face for your last year. Let's just yep. do that instead. Like Again, the other Kingston match will be, I'm sure, if, they do, if they're doing one, it'll be great again. But again, like it. You know that chapter's kind of closed. It's already been done. I feel like there's a uh, there's more value there. But yeah, outside of that, that was kind of a collision rampage. Uh, I, I watched the this evening. Don't have a huge amount of notes on that. Uh, Darby Allen, Jeff Hardy was probably as good as it could have been. Much better than the uh, first time they did the match. Uh, don't this Jeff Hardy story with him building heat on Instagram or wherever it is, and not shaking Darby's hand at the end of the match. Not necessarily into that, but um, yeah, really good daft stuff that you'd expect. Took a few more bumps than you'd expect, considering. And we just watched Jeff Hardy at the uh, 2007 Royal Rumble, and here we yeah. are in 2024. Um, yeah, he seemed to be wanting to try and keep up with Derby a little bit. And there's a lot of fun, nutty stuff in there. So yeah, that was solid on air on Rampage. Jericho and Matt Seidel was just a bit like yeah, some somebody realised they had Matt Seidel in storage and uh, and have dusted them off for a uh, for uh, for the week. Uh, Twice in two yeah. days, mate. Uh, you need to beat someone, Chris Jericho. How about you beat me because I'm shit was basically the promo on uh, on Dynamite and he got himself got himself a collision booking out of it as well. So I won't be too mad at it, but nah, continue to obviously the uh, Jericho conversation we've already had continues to be gross. I still don't understand why he's on TV and why he's continuing a story with uh, with you know stay to cash that but is what it is. Uh, unless you have any notes on Rampage, you're uh, you're looking forward to uh, to Dynamite this week. Uh, interesting uh, little lineup uh, we've got here, JP. Yeah, I didn't see any of Rampage, unsurprisingly, as well, because it is it, like you you look at the results for it as well. I'm just more amazed. Two Queen Aminata matches, I get. Two Matt Seidel matches, I don't get. Like, I'm assuming he's like a head trainer for them or something. There must be like loads of stuff that he's doing, something like that to justify this. This is normally the reasons we, we get to it. But no, in terms of this Wednesday, we've got. Well, I don't know, a match that I, I don't know, I would have would have imagined seeing this week. We've got. Um, Adam Copeland versus Minoru Suzuki in the Cope Open, mate. I'm going straight to that one. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, 100, old, 100 plus years in that one, isn't it? Where is it ranking? Oh, is it in the higher end of the matches they've had for these? What are we talking? 100 and, 110 between them? Something like that? Something like that. I love it. It's a hilarious. It's one of them. It's an um, I think Janela made the same joke. It's a Joey Janela spring break match, isn't it? It's a graphic. It's yeah. like more than a reality. I, I just think, yeah, the Minoru Suzuki and your opponent is Minoru Suzuki has become 2024's like and you're and you're going one on one with the Undertaker. Like it's like I've seen it. Um yeah. I haven't seen him versus Edge though, to be fair. So it does uh, it does amuse me and it does kind of uh, it has that novelty factor, doesn't it? Of Edge but, versus Minoru Suzuki, whoever thought. Yeah. But, uh, the <laughs> the um, other the other stuff we've got on here, and I say again, we mentioned it in terms of where where Swerve versus uh, um, Hangman happening. Well, they're both going to be on this week. We've got Hangman Page versus Penta El Zero Miedo, Swerve Strickland versus Jeff Hardy as well. So naturally enough, we're going to see some sort of interaction between those guys as well at the same time. We're talking. Well, you'd hope. 
Yeah, good. So it's good to see Penta in as, in a singles match, frankly, rather than in the commander ghetto that he finds himself in. Of like, oh, well, the brothers out, just go with him. In the same way as well, it's like Jesus I, Christ, lads, make an effort. Fuck he used to be out. one of my favorite wrestlers, Pentagon. I used to think he was going to be like a AW World Champion. <laughs> so he had a match on Rampage against Anthony Henry. He did his indie match and did all of his poses. Like <laughs> there is nothing there anymore with Pentagon as far yeah. as. Uh, Mining them as he was, a, anything more he was than goth Ray Mysterio, mate. He was going to be the one that stood out, wasn't he? And it's just, I believe I was wrong. Uh, that yeah. should be, a, I guess, I, if yeah, I love this book and Hangman and Swerve in prominent positions on Dynamite every week. Let's not let's not forget about Hangman, let's let him disappear off TV for four weeks. No, just keep them both on TV, keep them hot, keep them warmed up, keep giving them you know scalps. Like Jeff Hardy's a straightforward one for Swerve. I think Pence is probably going to be a straightforward one for Hangman, and we keep building towards whatever we're building towards with them two and Joe. Love that really solid, easy to do booking that they're yeah. doing. No, well, that's great. Um, oh yeah, you've got here as well. Yeah, Billy Gunn and there, the acclaimed uh versus uh Brian Cage, Corn and Toa Leona for the trios titles. Fuck you know. uh, no, <laughs> one set of trios titles are going for the other set in there as well, which would spell uh for that as well. Wardlow, who um on his way to pick up some king size silver Rizzler, is gonna be having a match against Trent Barretta on the way there as well. No doubt in a dressing gown this week. Well, I think that was the only positive of his like promo backstage with Adam Cole on last week's Dynamite was just the little, just his little nod of the head, and just a little mm-hmm. night when he said about giving up the title and stuff like that. We've got Timeless Tony Storm and Dion and Pratso meet face to face in there as well, and Sting and Darby Allen speak, which they've been doing all week. I don't know, you know, they were not, they've not been living like kind of like monks or something, not saying a word for the previous fucking uh, six days, but yeah. Mm-hmm. They're going to be talking on there. So, again, if they book it, it's it's how they structure that show. How do they bookend it? What have they got in there to spread out? But it looks like you've got three kind of relatively solid matches mm. on which to, to kind of build around there as well. It's, yeah, stick stick to oh. the serious stuff. Don't need to go launch straight into the rankings and stuff straight away, do we? Follow up with Joe in there and Hook as well, I would hope. Uh, there'll be yeah. some of that uh, in the show as well. It gets announced in the uh, in the coming days. But yeah, I've been enjoy- really enjoying Dynamite there the last few weeks. So let's uh let's keep it up. Mm. Let's uh, let's keep it going. Let's keep the uh, the hot streak going. Um anything else AW before we move on to uh, to New Japan JP? Uh or did not you were, is there any updates on Kenny Omega from what we said on the on the weekend show on Friday? Um, so just really this is yeah, a follow up on here. It's again he's gonna have to wait several weeks for him to find out, and it's a plan is to wait about seven weeks according to Dave Melt. So that was the latest of updates. We spoke about this on the weekend show, like you said, as well. So Dave has said in classic Dave speak, it's gonna be nothing for seven weeks, and then in seven weeks they're gonna see how everything goes. And at that point, he'll either need surgery or he in classic Dave style. I don't know if he won't need surgery or if he can heal. I'm sure there's a few ums and ahs that, that have been missed out of the transcription of that as well. <laughs> you He's know, just in a bad way. And we said this, not expecting to Dave. see him for like the entirety of 2024. Not Dave. Dave will be all over the place and is in that inexplicably tidy room, which isn't the kind of Dave that I want. Um, <laughs> but Kenny Omega, we said this as well. We'd like just looking doubtful for being around in 2020, like, all of 2024, probably going into 2025. Mm, it's true. Uh, sad one, and hopefully, hopefully, we, so there's some kind of turn around and we get some uh, some positive uh, news coming out of that. But on that note, yeah, we we got some uh, some TNA to talk in a in a little bit. But before we get there, should we talk some uh, some New Japan and a bit of an update on uh, on what we knew uh, this time? Uh, well, not even this time. Last week on uh, on Friday on the. Uh, on the weekend show, when it comes to Kazuchika Okada, he continues to be the uh, the biggest story in wrestling. And the the short version of the story is we still don't know. Um, as uh, talking of our mate uh, Dave Meltzer, um, as reported in the Observer uh, on the Observer Radio this week, that uh, Okada still not decided on his next steps uh, amid AEW and WWE interest. And um, Big Dave uh, did say he's gonna, and this is a uh, very much Dave speak, um, as, as uh, JP just alluded to. He's gonna go to whoever makes the best offer. Dave Meltzer says, um, "Great scoop." Uh, we hear from people who talk to people who know him very well and have talked to him in the last day or two, and he. He's not decided. It's not like it's a secret. He's just not decided yet, uh, Dave Meltzer said. He does go on to say that he knows uh, people in AEW who think they've uh, they've got him, and he knows people in AEW who, who, who hope they've got him, but don't think they've got him. And he also knows people in WWE 
hope they're going to get him. Um, as noted by the Observer website here, it does say that uh, AEW is believed to have made the uh, the stronger first offer, at least to, uh, to Kazuchika Okada. And Dave does say that AEW is probably the favourite. Um, but yeah, in Dave speak, JP, uh, anyway, says it's a done deal. It's not a done deal, but I do know there are people in AEW who are thinking they got him. Um, <laughs> with all that, I mean, it's a long-winded way of Dave saying, I just don't know. And none of us know. That's the thing. It's like we can have fun as we did on the weekend show speculating. Mm. You know, that's the initial, that was my initial reaction to, to the news. Like, where's he going to go? Oh, I think, you know, and we can give our own reasons why we think it's going to be AWWB, but it does genuinely sound like from what Dave said there. I can't himself doesn't know. And he hasn't fully decided and it is going to be that. It's, a, it's going to be that battle, isn't it? Between, I suppose, the devil he knows, which is AEW. Um, and, you know, he's obviously done a, a couple of their TVs now and he's been around and, you know, there's a lot of the roster versus, you know, the... The money and I suppose the, the money offer seems like it's better than AEW, but maybe the glitz and the glamour of going mm. to WWE and the idea of maybe he's one of those wrestlers who wants to do a WrestleMania. He is a big match wrestler, so you know, with the stage kind of fits him. Maybe Nakamura's in his ear about all the great surfing spots uh, in California. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It still could go Best either place way. To but... During the day, I'd imagine <laughs> as well. <laughs> It's like the, uh, yeah, it's like the uh, which, which is basically in the ring. Um, so maybe hopefully we don't get that a card in there if he goes to the WWE. But yeah, we're in the same same position we were really Friday. I thought there'd be more of a an update, but basically the update is no, it's not been decided there which way he's going. It's funny we also talked on Friday about Mercedes, and I feel like I say again, I'm going against the bookies' odds. I feel I'm I'm more confident that she's going to land in WWE than she is AEW. Just call it a gut feeling. It's a bit like me, a uh, big gut feeling that uh, mm. the Gabe Stevenson is uh, never going to be a thing based on that shit moon salt I saw uh, a gif of him doing on uh, on Twitter this week. Um, do I have a gut on a card? Uh, not really. I, I could still see either way. Uh, I think there's 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 pros and cons in in both directions, JP. But yeah, it's a, it, I could pitch him in either either scenario. And in some ways, this is the best thing for him. If you've got a chance to play like a big bidding war between the two major companies, and you've got such a reputation as well, like and a, a good reputation amongst like wrestlers of like I want to work with this guy. Like because he's just generally regarded as the best young, like that this just this prodigy in Japan. I was thinking of it, and I was like, obviously going to well, what's the crappy analogy that can come up with this? And I thought, well, Kane Azuchka Okada, because this is very much like Harry Kane leaving Spurs in some ways. There's a certain level that he can take him to, but ultimately, the best thing for him if he wants to actually kind of win stuff, i.e., headline on the kind of like bigger stages and earn the kind of you know the money and and stuff like that the glory to go elsewhere he, you know there's options obviously harry kane chose Bayern munich um and he's got the options here hasn't he, he can go to new money aw or kind of old evil empire in the vein of manu juve real madrid in wwe but i think ultimately he's doing the right thing which is like play the odds get the money because the bigger the money he gets the more likely that he is going to be, he has to be prominent because you can't make that kind of level of investment and forget about him and not fucking do anything. And you haven't got, vi and especially if you're WWE, that's be a justification to TKO. If you're going to spend this much money on a wrestler, you're going to do something with them. The pros and cons of WWE, I think, are like a. In the main, it's a much kind of fresher environment. We've seen a Carter in AEW. We kind of know what that looks like. We've seen him appear on Dynamites where it has been frankly underwhelming. And mm. if we look at, say, WWE, for example, the big problem we have is, well, it's the format of the shows. It's what they want out of their wrestlers, like in terms of delivering promos in ring and stuff like that. And that's obviously not his strength. His strength primarily is, is as a wrestler. And while they'll give him those stages on those kind of big shows – it's that week to week, how do you do it and keep him special and not do anything to kind of fuck up the Rainmaker character? Um, mm. And the reason why we're in this situation in the first place, and we didn't have this in the 90s, and even like, you know, we forget Genichiro Tenru appeared on WrestleMania 7 and in a Royal <laughs> Rumble. And guess what? People didn't lose their shit because of his great All Japan run and his fuse with Jumbo Saruta and the like. Do you know what I mean? And that's not a slight on Tenru. There wasn't that global knowledge of who these of who they are. 
Okada is a household name and it's become I suppose there's like better analogies when you think of Japanese baseball players who because baseball becomes so good they get poached by the big major league teams why there's more glory and notoriety and fame so I don't know enough about baseball to talk about Shinjiro Atani in any kind of like meaningful way however I understand he went for a fuckload of money because he's fucking awesome and it feels kind of like vaguely similar here uh, uh, in this position as well and so with AEW, the, the pros are like, he can have these brilliant matches, but they're kind of with people we've already seen. Whereas I think with WWE for him, and he's made the point himself, is he said he didn't want to leave in New Japan because he doesn't want to be the same Okada without the hunger. WWE does re- represent the greater challenge. Mm-hmm. Like, because it is like on a whole other level. If you want to prove yourself to be like a mm-hmm. proper, like kind of big star and it's the opportunity to become, like, you know, since Great Muta, the first, like, big men's star. I'm not even sure how big Muta was. I mean, I absolutely loved him. And you could headline kind of NWA shows. But WWE have never done this before mm. to, like, a meaningful degree. Nakamura won a Rumble. He didn't headline that mania. He wasn't in the last match. He didn't do the proper kind of headlining. He wasn't. He was in the middle of the cards, wasn't he, against AJ Styles? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and obviously had the big like takeover debut that we all remember fondly, and that's maybe m- oh, even yeah. more, of a, maybe even more of a clue though, because that was Triple H controlled, and it showed you that like that's how he presented Nakamura, and I think Triple H knows Akada's the biggest star in Japanese wrestling. If they want to, re- yeah. they keep talking about NXT Japan. If they want to crack Japan, then that is absolutely the route, isn't it? You know, you you push him strong out the gate, and you treat him like the star he is. I don't know if we can take the lean him from like a card that you know talking this week, saying that you know talking about uh, about him uh, about quitting, you know, saying that he felt comfortable uh, too comfortable in New Japan. Mm. Um, obviously talked about you know twelve you know twelve years in being in New Japan, and you know he doesn't want to be you know the same man without any hunger. He said he doesn't want to be so in a situation where yeah. he rests on his laurels, and let's be honest, he has the last few years rested on his, on, his, on his laurels. He's still one of the best wrestlers in the world, but it's hardly been, you know, inspiring stuff um, over the last couple of years. He has looked like mm. he needed maybe a, a bit of a change of scenery. I don't know what that change of scenery, you know, is. It's still hard to maybe imagine exactly what it looks like, you know, whether he goes to WWE or, or, or AW, but if he is looking for a challenge and he is looking for something new, as the chat is kind of saying... I kind of, just for the novelty of it, want to see him in WWE. As I said on Friday, that is where I personally lean on it as well. Like, for me, it's just the far more interesting concept. And that's with me. I'll accept the matches are going to be better if he's in AEW because he's going to be allowed to work that same style, work those same type of matches against types of wrestlers who are going to go out there and have big Okada matches with him. And it's almost a given that those matches are going to be good because it's AEW, because of course they are. But like you said, for all the reasons you've alluded to, you know, he'll be another number on the roster. It hasn't necessarily been exciting when he has been in AEW for his for his brief periods. I don't necessarily think it'd be exciting from that point of view. Whereas WWE, it will be at the very least, it'll be interesting how long that interest will sustain and how long they'll stick with a project with a you know a wrestler. Use English, you know, isn't fantastic and, you know, doesn't necessarily fit perfectly into their idea of what sports entertainment wrestling TV is. But it's a far more interesting concept than if the lab wants to challenge himself. That's the one, you know. I, I, I think if I was him, I'd probably do that. And again, we've got to remember it's the Triple H WWE as well. It's not Vince McMahon WWE. And, yeah. you know, yeah, we, we've got to update our takes to uh, reflect that as well. It's not a given they fuck it up. And I think they'd at the very least try. There was a brilliant analysis of the situation, and I say obviously she's our, our good close friend, but Karen Peterson and Bruce Lord were speaking about this. And they spoke about it at length, more than what I think they wanted to speak about, the new new beginning show in Nagoya, which if you're expecting a review oh, from we're me, doing now. <laughs> mate, I, Tamatonga versus Evil, no. Just no. No, 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 no. And I read what had happened, I went, absolutely fucking not. Like, that. Mm-hmm. I don't need to see it. Was it any good? No. I've only evidence to back that up. Absolutely not. But use your mind and your common sense, people, and you'll find that you never need to see that match. But as part of the analysis, the thing that you've noticed, obviously, in a Triple H WWE is it's the prominence of an EO Sky. It's mm. how Kyrie Sane has come back into the fold, Asuka. And effectively, they are pretty much allowed to be themselves on how, um, you know, and, and who they are as wrestlers and who they've kind of always been. So you suspect it's not going to be the case of 
They bring in Nakamura. He goes to NXT, but obviously you want to see him in a more prominent position in WWE. And then Vince gets his hands on him and just doesn't get him. And they're calling yeah. him Shin and the artist. And it's just like, oh, Jesus Christ, here we go. It's the usual old bollocks again. And it doesn't help that he didn't fancy doing putting much of a shift in as well. But he probably got the dispirited straight away going up to the main roster. I just don't see that happening with Okada. And from a business perspective, it is as well. I don't think Okada is going to be a business game changer for AEW. I think WWE would look at it in a very different way. They would be looking at this of going, okay, we are the worldwide brand leader. Therefore, we should have the best wrestlers in from a worldwide. And if you want to believe the kind of rumor mill necessarily about their plans on Japan, like the all Japan and like the, the stuff happening necessarily with that, if you wanted to crack it and you're signing like the biggest star of, you know, of the last, well, since, since he became IWGP champion, frankly, of like, there's this fucking prodigious talent they've got in the company. Yeah. You know, that's the, he's the guy that you go with. It's just that with, with AEW, I just, I think, yeah, the match will be good, but I suppose for m- I'm thinking, is that enough for him even the match to be good? Cause guess he's had loads of fucking great matches. And he's loads of those to go down. back to. And he's on the Body wind wise, down. You know, f- yeah. physically he is as well. There is that too. Yeah. Just, and like I say, people are, and it's not like we're watching every roar and SmackDown. And like I say, we're not Matty. We just can recognize that, you know, fundamentally things are better. But something you can recognize from the shows, and I think it's it goes without saying. And you can, and it's not even it's not because Triple H is this great guy that he's like all of a sudden like I'm gonna book up, I'm gonna book well all these Japanese people. I'm gonna have like the the, the slew right now on WWE TV. Like what SmackDown carried by when Roman Reigns is in there? Like I said on Friday, it's damage control, and it's the LWO stuff. Like the like again, it's obviously a different thing. Don't get me wrong, but like there's a reason Triple H also and WWE's booking. Is treating the Hispanic wrestlers with a lot more respect, and guy again, guy, guys who maybe English isn't you know that their their first mm-hmm. language or they're not necessarily great English language promos are getting booked well in WWE, and it's not the old WWE that's happening with them. I would argue like the Hispanic wrestlers in WWE are mm-hmm. getting treated better than the, the Hispanic wrestlers in AEW because in AEW the answer is just you know put one of two managers with them, either Dracula in a cape or the, the heel version in a suit. Um, you know, WWE is actually you know do, again not for charity reasons but for pure business reasons is like oh okay we want to crack japan we probably need some bigger japanese stars oh we want to you know like back in the day when smackdown used to be really well in hispanic households we want to crack that market a little bit more and yeah. get that part of uh that gigantic part of the world and um, paying attention to our product again oh you know what makes sense put more hispanic and, and spanish language wrestlers on our tv and it play like they are more set up to do that and they're thinking about those things in a way that you know, AEW can't or doesn't, you know, pick mm. it, pick which pick your poison on those. So yeah, like I say, I think anyone who thinks to be just fuck it with a card that I think the 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 talking out of you know a two years ago WWE, a three years ago WWE, not what we're currently uh, yeah. seeing in front of us. But on that note, like I said, we've done plenty of speculation on where he ends up and you know what is best. I don't know if I necessarily still have an answer on it on it, JP, is the is the what the way I see it landing. I just think you see it going for New Japan. You just said there. I don't even necessarily want to talk about New Japan and Nagoya. Mm. I've got not really anything to say about it. We did. We, we really enjoyed that US show, obviously last week, and yeah, you know, Wrestle Kingdom had plenty of positives uh, as well. But I don't know what is the impact on, on New Japan here. What is next for, for for New Japan here? Like, how do how do they recover from you know on short notice and based on that Okada interview? Mm. It very much was as short as notice as it felt like on the outside how do they recover what do they what is what are their next steps as far as filling that gigantic hole well this is the thing and this is where it's it's very much a shit will get off the pot moment because the thing that they haven't done in the time that the card has been winding down for a while really since the end of i want to say it's the third reign that he has the one that's the really long reign and it ends with kenny omega winning he's been kind of on the point where he go okay we never realized it at the time because you never do. This is his great run, but really he is kind of necessarily winding down. And that is around sort of, well, we're talking 20, well, 2018 into 2019. What have they done over those previous four years to build up new talent? Nothing. They, they, there's talent there, but not over talent being booked in a meaningful way. And 
this is the thing with them is it's going to force them into a situation where they're going to end up pushing you would imagine i think this is what their situation is going to be for the first few months they'll act like there isn't an issue at all and they think they'll get away away with it with a kind of a night oh because i think the conservatism is so driven into that company that even when they're staring of like a, not an evolve or die situation but they're a very distant number three at this stage like it feels like they are a distant number three they they have the kind of big shows but the match quality well aew kind of is, we've had this conversation before sort of taken over very much that kind of discourse as well and while they can offer a degree of spectacle like there's a recognition generally that there's the stale the stables are stale the booking is stale we spoke you know wanting to get excited about things like g1 and not being the case and it's like well maybe there should be the recognition of okay things need to change we need to go with some people we need to think outside of the box it was interesting seeing the interview from kevin kelly oh to, um yeah is he wrong about anything like i mean nope. he's wrong about all of his political opinions but is he wrong about any of the stuff he said about New japan like i've, I've got it up here like he said akada wasn't a fan of harold mage obviously um talks about the big names might look at this and consider leaving as well talked about the yen being weak that might be a reason uh, akada is a uh, leaving doesn't think there's any japanese wrestlers new japan can bring in that'll that'll make a difference and that they need to promote with it from within there's a laundry list of like very mm -hmm. <laughs> talking points from from uh from kevin kelly on like what the problems are with new japan and you know what they can actually do to solve them yeah and like say he's he's not wrong on a lot of these simple things like the g1 being cut down to kind of keep the quality control there because they're the things that have gone Things are saying about Hiromu and Despi just not being in the fucking junior division because it makes them mean less. There's like, it is ridiculous in terms of the laundry list. And he must have been itching to say this stuff for years. Mm. Seeing what we were seeing there as well about like, he's even writing the Gabriel Kid stuff. I was going, yeah, it's just a lot of it is just too much swearing. Like, it just mm. feels like kind of needless. I think he's kind of spot on for that. The thing I would say he's not right, and I'm not convinced about um, David Finley at all in there as as well. But, and he slags off House of Torture, which is great. Like, I'm very... Yeah, that commentary like, was always a sheet, wasn't it? <laughs> like, he'd yeah. come, they'd come out on him and uh, him and Charlton and just be like, oh, they're ruining the show, the crap. Like, this is yeah. the worst thing in Japan. Somebody needs to do something about it. You knew they weren't there. They weren't necessarily talking in Cape Faith there. So, <laughs> the, the thing about these is, like, I think there was just an assumption, and it's probably based very much on stereotype, of in Japan, loyalty to business means that might be a company you stay with for the rest of your life. And, I mean, I am i can't say about massive sociological changes in Japanese culture over that time, but I suspect there's a loosening of that, particularly if you feel the company isn't being managed well. And I think it hints at a greater dissent in the company that's been there for a while. The booking is very stale like you need to look to areas like that but it's even the things like the policy with social media and not sharing clips and stuff it's like do you not want to be seen like is it somehow pissing you off that there's an audience who'd like well, to TV see what good is on your show I don't see you say, but you speak to them like you mm -hmm. you bring up the point you make the argument at least and at least try and say that is you make tv asahi the heel in in all of this stuff so it feels like it's kind of like a long time coming for this and i don't blame him for leaving and i don't blame others for leaving because there's lots of other contracts that are up virtually all gabriel kidd's contracts up dan maloney's contracts up the bullet mm. club lads are there now i think a good few of them will will re-sign but there are other options for wrestlers to go to and they've had if nothing else the shop window of new japan and which to go so that'll be there as as well it's but when an akada goes if you're like Japanese talent, and you don't really want to leave Japan. You want to live there. You, your family life is there. That's the place you want to be. You know, feel happiest being there. I th it feels to me like you'd feel very dispirited at this stage, and you think, well, if he's leaving, why the fuck would I think about staying? And if yeah. the money's not as good as it was, then why the fuck would I think about staying? Because there'll be options and offers. Definitely. And that's the thing that's going to happen. You know, I saw a lot of <laughs> New Japan fans trying to cope with this news, kind of being like, fuck, what are we going to do? You know, if the if the yen is weak and if, you know, other companies come call and this is going to keep repeating. And there is that financial element of it. But the, the problems New Japan have got have been 
black and white for us all to see for yeah. years now. The bloom's been off the rose for a while. Like that's what I thought thought was so illuminating about this Kevin Kelly interview. Like if people like us can see it and fans can see it, the wrestlers can see it, the people working there can see it. Like this list of things Kevin Kelly said, they're all things that fans think because anybody with a brain who watches the company would pretty much pick up on the majority of yeah. these things. Like how many how many times the fans say things like yeah, Hiromu, for example, Kevin Kelly brought up. He should be a heavyweight, shouldn't he? Like he's, he should fuck off at some point because they're probably never going to do it. The yeah. Desperado is someone uh, Kevin Kelly was cheerleading. Absolutely, is somebody who should be in that position. Or if you're, you know, if you're somebody on the undercard who's looking at like, you know, evil getting chance after chance, you probably look at it and go, "Why the fuck is is he in that position?" And I'm not. Kevin Kelly's thinking that. You know, he doesn't necessarily go in on Sonata, but I'd like, I'd like to think he has the same <laughs> opinion on Sonata. We all do. They've chosen a lot of the, the wrong guys over the last while. Yeah. Um, another, another one of my favorite Kevin Kelly quotes in here. There's no money in Master Watto. Blunt, but right. <laughs> He's correct. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. Uh, there's some there's some easy choices. I feel like they, they could have made the last few years that they, they just and, haven't. Um, you know. And a card is gonna leave. And we speak about like who are the guys to step up. And there's the obvious ones you go for. Like Yota Suji would be the absolute you just put the fucking belt on him. Yep. What if it doesn't work? Is he gonna do any worse than Sonada? Like, I don't think so. And it's not what the crowds, how they're reacting to it either. Do you go with Shota Rubino? Too early, but do you know what? Like, I would at least admire the attempt. But none of these lads are going to get the big one against the Carter, which could kind of set them up. True. That would have been something that you would have wanted to arrange on the way out, even if it was hastily arranged, right? Rather than Tanahashi having the match, which I get for historical reasons. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. like, there is also a day after that where a Carter isn't there. And that you have to deal with the reality of the situation. So maybe that space could be somewhat better used for the long term growth of the company. And I just think they've they've taken it easy because I think they I don't know whether or not it's because they've looked at the domestic situation in Japan and thought, well, we're all right compared to Noah, compared to all Japan, compared, you know, we outshine them, we outdraw all of these other companies, the dragon gates of the world. We don't need to worry about them. Joshi is its own entity that it's absolutely fine. It makes money for the bigger company because we've got the biggest, biggest Joshi company as well there. And that they've just thought this from a purely kind of like, like domestic way. It's just like, yeah, but you're also more susceptible to kind of losing people as well at the same time and, and not doing any, like they've you just think of the amount of time they've wasted. I hate, I hate going back to it, but that G1 block, they fucking wasted it. All okay, these young Kiyomiya, guys <laughs> and Kaito Kiyomiya. <laughs> yeah, and they wasted it. Oh, always lad. comes back to him. It always uh, comes back to him as well. And he's not getting his fucking win back, is he yeah. either? Like, I don't know he's not their guy, but still, I feel so bad for him. <laughs> I think they'll try. Mate, I think they'll try and sign him now. Like I think that's the thing. It's whether or not are they going to go with the young guys, but is there other talent that they would aggressively go after? Like I think Kevin Kelly raises about Nakajima in terms of not being like a guy who's going to be able to make a difference. Hmm. I don't expect that straight away. I think the thing he would do is he'd add an overall level of quality and a perhaps a bit more kind of like the cards are generally better. And um, yeah, there are, there are so many problems with New Japan. I don't have sympathy with them because it's not like they haven't had time or chances or have seen the growth of AEW with them as well and thought, actually, we need to get better here. And they That's never did. Left. That's one last point I'd like to make. I've heard it discussed in a couple of podcasts this week, so it's not a new point. What the fuck does Forbidden Door look like this year? Like, well, like a card has gone, Osprey's gone. Like, I guess it's Naito versus somebody. But who else? Like, we haven't got like what's the dream match like for for Forbidden Door this year? You know, Tanahashi's past the point where you can, you know, the MJF match was a nice little opener, but you know that's not there, is it? I guess Shingo, you could, you know. Tony Khan might realize he's somebody who should be in big singles matches and not in six mans. You know, we might, we maybe will get that. <laughs> Young lads. Point, yeah. Well, what is he? What's the window as a concept? <laughs> if uh, New Japan gets any weaker than it's uh, than it's looking right now, um, Evil and Sonata in big matches. JP. Is it's like they're on secondment to AEW. Frankly, it's just like, I'll go and work there for a couple of Wonder weeks. Oh, not... Yeah. Jay White. Do, do you like do we do 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 literally like uh, the WF invasion where instead yeah. of like it being Steve Austin and Kurt Angle on the WCW side, it's fucking yeah. You could actually you know Akada, Osprey. Jay White, you've got the guys there. <laughs> you can create your own YouTube fan. You don't need them. <laughs> like... Which 
I imagine as well, if you're a card, just as one last guy tying it back into him as well, as, as well, and you look at the Forbidden Door stuff and he just thinks, just probably don't want to see some of these blokes for a while. I'm sick of the fucking sight of them. Like whether or not how many times he's sat in a locker room opposite to Gucci and thought, he's making an ass joke. I can't be bothered. Like I've had enough of this. I'm bored. I'm going to go to WWE and fucking cash in as well. Because if he goes there, guess what? He'll be loaned out for Wrestle Kingdom. And that'll be even more like purgatory because he'll only be in a semi main because he'll never be given the title because he's not their guy. So that that's just kicking while he's fucking down, then, isn't it? Yeah, we'll just have a carder for a semi main. It's just like, yeah, can I not be in the big match? Nope. You're not getting the title <laughs> at all. So at that point, I, I'm just saying now, I think you'll go to WWE to, to wrap up on that. <laughs> I, if, yeah. I think you should, if I was advised, I'm going to say you should. I actually think it's more like the AW, so I'll back that horse, JP. Oh. We'll have a bet. We'll throw something on it. But I almost, almost and it's not a sentence I ever thought today, I almost Deal. hope it's through the week, just because it makes the rest of the landscape a little bit more interesting. And it's a it's a fresh coat of paint on a car that I think yeah. you'd get if he was an AW, even if that's just good, I know. Uh, anything more on New Japan, JP, before we talk some, uh, some TNA? Uh, pretty Nothing much on the, it. You begin to go, yeah, great review. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't even want to read out the results. Like it looked like a disgusting card, and all the credit to Karen and Bruce Lord for actually going through and watching it and reviewing it, which is a shame because Battle in the Valley, if you've got the time, watch that if you haven't seen it. That was a cracking oh. show. Yeah, don't bother oh, with this one. Cool. Last week was the uh, the busy homework week. This week, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, a little bit light on as we found on the weekend show, rather, it was light on previews and light on shows this weekend. But one thing That's we did true. both catch up on, JP, uh, from mm. last week, it happened at the time we did weekend show, but now that I've seen it, was uh, Impact from uh, from Thursday night. Um, the new TNA um, starts off with a bang. Um, Osprey Alexander, we've definitely got a lot to say about that. It's, it's free on the YouTube as well. Um, speaking of the YouTube, I've got, I say it every time, that Impact, it's not Impact Plus, I don't know what they, necess- what they actually call it, but it's a 99p subscription I've got, JP, on YouTube to TNA. And I get Impact every week. And like it's so worth it for 99p a month. It's in HD and on YouTube. I can just hit play the one time every eight weeks. I decide I want to watch Impact. Um, it might be more often now based on this show. Maybe not so on the spoilers, but like it was great just log- putting YouTube up and in there with me Action Kids subscriptions and all these Vegas YouTubers and such. <laughs> and lot culture lads um, and people doing delivery de- delivery rides. There it was. TNA Impact uh, from this week, um, the full show. And like I say, even if you don't want that, matches on YouTube, which I think is a, a really bright move. But mm. yeah, we got our, our first look at uh, how, what this uh, new TNA is going to look like, JP. I should continue to say we should temper our, I think, overall positive thoughts on this uh, this episode mm. of the TV, at least positive from me, um, with what it looks like the spoilers <laughs> look like more longer term um, for this TV show going uh, down the road. Um, there's a few, a couple of debuts in there, JP, that aren't things that uh, I necessarily want to see out of a, a new TNA. Um, speaking of YouTube, I've heard Simon Grimm's thoughts on uh, on a lot of things. Uh, Simon Grimm shoots on um, who's it going to be next uh, is probably the uh, the future for uh, for this TNA. But that aside. The show itself was good. <laughs> Long way with the way to say it, but uh, Osprey Alexander was uh, exactly what I want out of a uh, out of TNA, and yeah, it felt like a uh, in a lot of ways the fresh coat of paint that I didn't feel like the pay per view actually was last week. Hard to kill. Yeah, I think if anything, if it was like I don't know, very rarely do I watch episodes of Impact these days. There's a couple that we've gone into. I think this is the last one with like the thousand episode specials and stuff like that. I think that might have been the last kind of like full episode I'd watched. But for this one, you can tell that the production upgrades are there. Then like, and it's also the fact that that venue helped, and that it was only a TV. Like, I think the the issue was is people had very high expectations for the overall rebrand and the pay per view. And what, as we said last week, they actually delivered was an impact show really which is which is you know there's bits of it that are fine there's not a lot of stuff in it that completely shits the bed like they're not in that kind of place this is like the new level of where they're at so i think for the tv i had much lesser expectations um for it as well but i thought in the main i thought this is a very well produced thoroughly decent sports entertainment version of wrestling which has in its main event an absolute fucking belter of a match in there as well and so it's hard to dislike it and they've got the thing is they're going to need to be in places like this most weeks like in terms of and getting these kind of like similar type 
crowds as well because I think they massively help like along the way. And it's just a brilliant venue. I almost feel like that should be like your home venue you go to for fucking Bound for Glory. That's how much I like the Pearl Theatre at the Samstown. Is it, yeah, no, the uh, Sam's house bloody awful compared to this. I'm sure it's cheaper, but oh, this one's like a little... building. I thought it nah. was. Is it? Is it? Uh, no, no, is you it might be pa- right. Yeah. Palms Resort Casino. It seems oh, to be loads palms. of cas- Yeah, you know this as well. And it almost feels to be giving Matty tips for his holiday over there. But Vegas scares me like it does, like it, it yeah. worries me as a place. Like for knowing what I'm like, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, Palms is, um, is, is one of those off strip ones that I've, it's better years like years ago, but still, you know, still a decent place. Um, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's where that is. So Sam's town is like, it is the other place that people are from in Vegas. Oh no, I agree with you. I just think, unfortunately, the thing they can't have a room because Will Ospreay. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. the problem with it. Um, it's both the positive and the negative of this show. Cause you know, that main event, as you alluded to there, it was everything that that pay you needed this match. Like again, yes. Maybe it's really simplistic to say it, but when they found out they were running ahead to head with New Japan on the Saturday, to make your fucking show Sunday, like <laughs> and do the tapings on Monday, I, maybe logistically it couldn't work. And you know, somebody who works there is screaming and screaming at us now, telling us all the reasons that it, it couldn't have happened. But you should have just moved heaven and earth to make it happen because what that pay per view was missing was this match. Because if this match was on that pay per view. Yes. Oh, it was like it was everything in it. It was like everything about it. Like I know Osprey's on the way out, so, so you know you're not going to get him again, and that is the negative. But Josh Alexander couldn't personify TNA anymore. Like them two, like the the point of because again it's a four and a half star plus match, maybe four point yeah. five, and the Meltzer went went full five on it. Like up there with the match of the year this year. Uh, maybe Joe Hook pips it for me, but it's close. Like but jo- Josh Alexander is TNA personified, and there was a moment in yep. the match with him and Osprey. We're literally doing reversals between like the styles clash and the ankle lock with a TNA logo branded in the background. It was like that's the TNA nostalgia people think of when they think of the good times of TNA. It's a real shame that like obviously they can't get AJ, but imagine if on that pay per view or on this TV they'd been able to get Kurt Angle in to be like instead of Santino Morella being your fucking a GM. Imagine it was Kurt Angle and he's oh. Kurt, Angle, Kurt Angle like Josh Alexander. Is the good times of TNA personified? I know we. I think he's got to do the Be Legends deal, hasn't he? I think that'd be the reason why you can't do it, unfortunately. But it was just like, oh, that'd be perfect if they could. But like, get yeah, these two like going out there and having like a near five star match, like really felt like those good times. It felt like AJ, Joe, Daniels, those types of guys going out there and you know blowing off the stink of whatever else was there on any given TNA show back in the day, and just delivering like something that was special and it was fucking honestly like I everything about it, it was part new japan main event part classic tna match it was osprey absolutely not taking a day off when he absolutely could have you no know, considering he's not going to be doing any more tna after this he did everything in his power to put josh alexander over like there's putting somebody over clean and then there's putting somebody over clean with like an exclamation point on it that's what he did for josh alexander here Again, the spoilers dampen my excitement on what next for Josh Alexander. But just speaking in isolation, Osprey couldn't have done more for him. And like, yeah, this was what, you know, that kind of chanting from your fucking, you know, with, with your whole chest out TNA feeling that the pay-per-view was missing. This had it here and they had their star in Josh Alexander. It was just magical, perfect main event for this show. Even even, even enjoy that. I hate him coming out now, Scott Demore. Can't stay off telly, can he, with his little clip. Or <laughs> even no. his fucking emotional speech after it was like, yeah, want to run through a wall for TNA now. Let's go. TNA is back. It was just so well done. It was brilliant. It was just fantastic. I think you've hit the nail on the head, particularly like thinking that you put this match onto the pay-per-view and you give Hammerstone another match then you've got yourself like, this is the thing, it's that one match that kind of goes, now this is the proper wrestling match you need to see that you know is going to be great in this. And like I say, Gabe, I mean, how many hidden blades did he kick out of? Did he yeah. kick out of two? He kicked out fucking everything mm. that Gabe took the fucking Tiger Driver through the table. Well, a gnarly bump for that as well at the same time. And it kind of had, I don't know, it just... It felt like Will Ospreay's going, this is my last ever TNA match. If there's a company where perhaps you would argue of all the ones he's wrestled in and generally had some of the best matches in recent years in those companies, this is the one place where he hasn't really... I mean, the Mike Bailey match was was very good. The first match of this was was very good. It wasn't bad in any way, but it wasn't this. This felt like the sort of 
spectacular epic. Yeah, it was. And, and that's by the comparison. That's comparing it to the very high standards of the other matches he's had in 2023. But here, it was just like, no, gonna going to put him over. Why? And they played into it. You're a TNA kid. He grew up with TNA. He grew up watching it on Challenge TV, like so many wrestlers did in this country. And the kind of like the impact, pardon the pun, that it had on in terms of British wrestling, because it offered like some great wrestling that you never saw in WWE. And it was just kind of closer back to that. And while, you know, there are things about it and you look at the spoilers, and you look at some of the people involved and you go, why are they involved? You don't need them. They don't add anything to the show necessarily. I think it's, I came away thinking of like Alex, Josh Alexander of just going like if new Japan are going to try and like get someone in, in the next year, my God, he's the bloke they should be going for. Like in terms of delivery, like if you want that wild card G one pick to put in there, put over strong, you don't need to have him win the whole thing, but go fucking deep into it to like make yourself like a big Western star. Go with Josh Alexander, because again, Will Ospreay, I suppose we, we expect them to be brilliant matches. I think the thing that with this is the how Josh Alexander lived up to it at points and then would show fire in the right places. So, you know, it's 20, just what, 23 minutes long in terms of this match and it, it never doesn't feel like it at all. Completely going hell for leather during this. The crowd are losing their shit as well during it. They feel like they got their fucking money's worth at the same time, which then precipitates to have the whole big rah-rah speech and it all works. And they're yeah. not going to be able to do this every week. No. But in terms of what, like, this is the benchmark of what they should be doing. And it's, yeah. you know, Josh Alexander should be the special guy. You know more about the spoilers. I'm looking through them desperately to see what they, they've done in terms of who they're he's positioning with, with. He's going from his match with Will Ospreay to a few with Simon Grimm. Oh, <laughs> for sure. fuck's sakes. <laughs> it's for all that positive. Long term view with Simon Grimm is what they set up on those TV tapings. Like Simon Gotch, uh, for anyone who was. He was an ISIS there. last thing we saw. What a. That was the last place. <laughs> he was. <laughs> also, I, I won't give the full spoilers, you know, because I know people are excited for, uh, for you know, to, to, to watch this. And maybe in real life, it'll be better than the spoilers of. Your boy Hammers disappeared as well. Like again, he was the other positive of the uh, the preview. I mean, I'm guessing that's positive. He might be signing somewhere else, I guess. But that's another. He was one of the few positives I thought of that pay per view. So yeah. that that didn't give me much to uh, to be excited about from these spoilers. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I mean, uh, the show itself. Uh, this this this. You know, we don't need to go through it match by match. But yeah, I thought the, you know the yeah. cruiserweight uh, multi person was good. Thought Bikingo got a bit more spotlight than he did on the pay per view. Yeah, Jake something went over, but you know, thought that was strong. Uh, Zia Liverpool's Zia Brookside, I will fucking question her. Um, she's from Leicester, fuck off. Um, <laughs> against Tasha Steels, uh, which is a weird thing to do, by the way, to say she's from Liverpool on the same show that Zach Gibson's on, but anyway, um, they look good. Uh, Grizzly Young Vets against uh, Young and uh, Kazarian, they did the angle with their uh, Kazarian turning on Eric Young. They'll continue to try with that away there. Thank you, Kazarian. He will continue to be a professional wrestler. Um, but I did like, I thought, yeah. Grizzly Young Vets look good. What I found strange from like the two two appearances I've seen them, it's a very small sample size. If you knew nothing about them, you might think James Drake is the star of the team. I think he's looked better than Gibson across these matches. Maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it's because they haven't given Gibson a mic, or maybe it's he looks a bit mm. more slender than than maybe I'm used to seeing him. Maybe it's just Drake's been good, you know. Credit where it's due, and um, he's just looked the start. Maybe the, maybe the way that they've been working the matches has been in a way that makes Drake look the best out of the two. But um, either way, you know they they got a, a straight up tag team match, which is what they need. Get them established. That's a positive from the spoilers because I knew there's a, a few of them um, come up as well. Uh, very much uh, enjoyed that. Not so keen on uh, the system. Brian Myers, Alicia Edwards, Eddie Edwards, and, uh, and Moose having their uh, their meal in what felt like a, a cheap Vegas uh, diner. Um, supposed to be like this five star meal they're having, yeah. like world champion, and it looked like they had a they had a few chicken tenders made for right. on a super one. Um, they're at <laughs> O'Neill's. <laughs> they're ordering a big blue burger at O'Neill's is what they were offering there as well. It's just like. And you can get the odd nice O'Neills as well. Yeah. Whether they have a fucking rugby on in the corner of the place or something like that, while well, that was going on there, <laughs> like you know, yeah. it was weird that it environment. Was Vegas on a budget, mate. You can do Vegas on a budget, absolutely. But this was Vegas on a budget. Uh, this was not the oh, absolutely the world champion presentation as we were hoping for. I'm not sure on that uh, that heel stable, but we'll uh, we'll see going forward. 
The other, I suppose the other notable thing we should mention, Nick Nemeth, um, former Ziggler. Mm. That was edited to fuck, wasn't it? <laughs> His promo. Like, that was a man who looked uncomfortable working without a script for the first time in a, in a very long time. And he's a stand-up comedian. So I would have thought he'd be a lot more comfortable than he was. But, like, there was obvious bits in there where he was rambling and then it cut and then he was in the middle of another sentence. Like, the material was that bad that they had to chop it down for TV. Um, <laughs> he wasn't great. Uh, he didn't jump off the page for me. Um, did something with Steve Macklin, so I guess we'll see. I haven't fully uh, noted on the spoilers where that heads, but... I liked Macklin uh, in this bit. He was better than Ziggler. Better than, uh, he... than Nemeth. Sorry, I should need to get used to that, but... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quote, like, unquote, stand-up comedian Liam's right. Yeah. <laughs> Alleged he... stand-up comedian uh, Dick Nemeth. Because that line he said to him as well, like, they're not going to be talking about Nick Nemeth, they're going to be talking about whatever happened to Dolph Ziggler. Like, and kind of, I just thought he kind of nailed it, but it's also the way that he carries himself, Macklin. Like, I'm, we've been very high on the Macklin train ever since he's kind of coming in. Like, actually, no, he's got, like, the best attitude for this. And I just don't want to see him in this feud because he's going to end up losing this feud, obviously, because they're building to Nick Nemeth and Moose. And it's like, no, Macklin... Macklin Alexander would be a direction you'd wanted them to go in as well. I just thought, I don't want this guy to be kind of cannon fodder for him straight away. There's loads of other people who Nick Nemeth can fucking beat, first of all, that I don't really care about if you just want him to have those kind of wins on TV and build. Have him feud with fucking Eddie Edwards, for God's sakes. Like, I don't mm -hmm. care. At least there's a storyline reason for that. But with Macklin there, like, Macklin is, they've always been good at this in recent years where TNA have, have in, slash impact have kind of, been at their strongest is thinking these are our six people we go with in the main event other people may rotate in and out of this company we may only have them for a limited amount of time but these are the people that we kind of always have as the core and it's very much the home like the people that they've built they've worked in buildings that are in a bigger place now than when they got them originally and macklin is very much into that kind of camp as well it's like he should be their kind of big bruiser tough guy bastard basically because he fulfills that role. He looks the fucking part. And I don't want to see him like fed to Nick Nemeth because he has to have a win against what is considered to be a top guy in TNA. It's like, I, I, I'm holding out all judgment on him mm. until I actually start to see some matches because then we'll have a better idea of can he have like kind of what are considered to be good matches on this level. Because I think if that's the case, I'll be more invested. He'll probably feel more comfortable. But I'm already getting those kind of slightly iffy vibes of like uh, the match isn't is just a fucking bog standard three a three and a half star WWE match. Then yeah, this isn't gonna this isn't necessarily gonna work out well. I think I, like I said on the pay per view, it, I do think it's a good fit, but I also think you know people imagined this uh, this great world champion Dolph Ziggler could have been. Uh, there was a narrow window when he won the Money in the Bank where maybe he could have been more in his career, but if he gives those like you know, seasoned vet who can work with the younger guys vibe that Cope is starting to maybe give a little bit on collision. That's probably the ceiling um, for, for Nick Nemeth in, uh, in Impact going forward. But I guess we'll see. But yeah, any other notes on uh, on Impact before we uh, move on to a couple of WWE notes? Um, like I say, not the most promising spoilers uh, going forward. I won't go through them in full detail, but I've just got to hope the presentation's as good as it was here for this first Yeah, impact. That was actually mostly the strong point so maybe some of this stuff that looks shite on paper i'm just i'm clutching the straws here jp could potentially still be all right uh, but i think it felt fresh it felt like it did if i didn't know what was coming based on this show would i watch impact mm. next week probably yeah um yeah it'd be on my youtube so i'll probably have it on at some point um so we'll see i'm more likely to dip in and out of this product mm. that's the thing i'm more likely not to just wait for those kind of bigger shows at the end of the month that maybe it'll be something where i just go I've got an hour, hour and a half to kill someone. I watch some impacts there as well. And I think that's the thing about it is that what they've done in like, this is like a long time kind of coming for us, for them doing, getting to a level where they're put on even hard to kill. Wasn't the work like people were describing it as if it was like fucking horrific. It's like, no, I get levels of disappointment. I can kind of understand that because people, come to TNA with their own fucking personal TNA baggage of having invested time in it and had it fucking wasted before. doesn't feel like we're in that era of TNA. Like, it feels like we're kind of past it. Where like, There are some grown-ups in the room, relatively. 
when it comes to the talent recruitment and the kind of people they bring in, when I see Big Con back on the spoils, I go, do you need him? Do you really need him? Really? Like, PCO was on this show. I noticed we didn't mention that at all. That's the kind of shit they need, they need to get rid of. <laughs> There's still those lingering little bits about it, but yeah, in the main, on a light news week, it was quite fun to see something like that. Definitely. Well, on that note, moving on, last uh, kind of the subject on the docket, and mainly because Raw is uh, is tonight, and uh, mm. a lot of the doo adjacent news stories are probably going to be uh, old news by the time people listen to this on uh, on Tuesday morning. If uh, Punk and Cody give her a, a world class uh, promo, that I, I'm 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 imagining on my head, it's going to be maybe I'll record some special audio tomorrow, and um, that could be a thing um, to cover uh, the shoot the the poo poo shoot uh, promos. I'm sure the two will be uh, cutting on each other on Raw tonight, <laughs> but. Yeah, WWE wise, um, there's really much to, to cover. Uh, Seth Rollins' injuries kind of uh, keeping WrestleMania in the air. In the air. Um, apparently, he's open and raw tonight, so it'll be you know who knows. Uh, my, my guess is that they'll probably probably stick with him um, and try and do the uh, still try and do the punt match at Mania unless he's uh, he's on Raw to vacate the uh, the title tonight. I don't know. Uh, probably a point to speculate on that. With uh, the answer being uh, only an hour away uh, at time of recording. Yeah. Um, more newsworthy. Smackdown um, was uh, was on Friday. Decent show. Um, enjoyed it. Enjoyed uh, the, uh, the the continued build to the uh, to the four way uh, where title match. It's coming. It's coming across like it's going to be a solid rumble. This me and Matt will be uh, previewing it on the weekend show on uh, on Friday. It's one of those rumbles where it's like you've got your main rumble match with a few different contenders, and you've got a couple of strong singles matches slash a four way match. Um, you know, underneath it, you don't need too much. It doesn't need to be a 10-match card. You know, just a couple of uh, strong matches uh, will do. Um, and, yeah, from SmackDown, I did think the uh, the Logan Paul and Kevin Owens segment was particularly good. Um, you know, uh, Logan Paul bringing up, uh, you know, and eating a, st- a stunner early on um, and that being the uh, kind of like the, uh, the, 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 the little bit of a seed they planted uh, for this uh, match uh, all this time along. But, yeah, held his own promo-wise and, uh, and angle-wise after that. But that was good. Like I say, I, I'm still enjoying in the air, the four way stuff with uh, with Roman and uh, and Randy and the lads, and yeah, even got it. Uh, the retainer Pete Dunn, speaking of Brit JP, we started with Brit we can end with some uh, some Brit as well. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you caught that as uh, as he came out with the uh, the ghost of Tyler Bate, um, the ghost of the Brit yeah. um, that is the uh, homeless Tyler Bate. <laughs> He's gonna be a trivia question soon, Tyler Bate. Like, he, he, got, he got on SmackDown, did he really? When I don't remember because. He couldn't look. I know Triple H is, as we said earlier, more willing to give these types of lads uh, a go on mainstream TV. He's not going to last long. <laughs> he comes, he looks fucking three foot tall, homeless, got no no presence. Yeah. Like I, I always thought Tyler Bates had a good, had a bit of a star presence. It's not coming across when he's been on proper WWE telly, coming out and doing okay. his wave. Like he just looks, he looks terrible. He looks, maybe, that maybe it's on that shit, whatever the fuck it is, it's cool. I don't know what it's supposed to be, or why you're supposed to like him, or root for him. He's just a weird man who waves. Mm. Awful. Not, hasn't hasn't developed at all as a character since 2017, um, back yeah. when they signed him. Um, eyes like piss. Eyes like piss holes in the snow. To quote, get Carter. It, and Pete Dunne, like yes, the new story is they brought him. He's Pete Dunne again, no longer Butch. Mm. Like. I, Butch was, Butch was was a layup for us to bury, but I always thought he pulled it off as far as like the scrappy do character that was following Seamus around. If that was his role, he was going to do it well, and he did it well. Um, and I think, I think, unlike Tyler Bates, who's like, if this was an EWR game, is over us and do do be like twenty percent. I think Pete Dunne's got a little bit of equity with like the WWE fans, and I think. If you just get him away from Tyler Bate and let him be his own man, he'll be a lot better off and just let him be Pete Dunne. And I think he'll turn that into something. Uh, I'm still relatively confident on that. But um, the crowd reaction yeah, uh, wasn't necessarily uh, leaning that way. I, I think give it some weeks. I think that was the, the, the thing that I saw of this. I thought the fact they've given him his name suggests they're going to want to take him more seriously because let's face it, you just say, oh, it's his name. His name's Butch. You're like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, what is that? That's like, you know. It's not a reference to Pulp Fiction and Bruce Willis's character, is it? It's you know, it just sounds. It makes him sound like a fucking dog, frankly, um, <laughs> in a literal sense for this. Um, whereas, like as Pete Dunn, I was like thinking to myself, "Well, what could they do with him?" It's just like, well, I, you know, you want to put him in that. Eventually, you think in that U.S. title picture mm-hmm. is the kind of place where you want to put him there and have him 
have like kind of substantial runs and then give him a big match on a UK pay-per-view. Like, I think if that turns out to be, and he fulfills the role of British wrestler bloke who is like kind of good at wrestling on the card and he's not the biggest, but he can have like the kind of bigger matches on sort of like the odd shows in the way that a Chad Gable has. Like, you know, in some ways, like you can, you can put him into that. And like I said, I think there is that equity there. There is the fact that they put him into a character thing and they kind of made it work. Not that I liked it. That's the proviso. (laughs) I hated it. I never liked it. I liked that group. I thought they were fun. It worked. They made it work in with their banger after banger after banger stuff as well. Mm. As like they made, you know, Shinola out of shit to (laughs) to use that old catchphrase in there. So I think pretty soon they'll work him out of this tag team. I think they're doing this maybe as a favour to Pete Dunham. Oh, we'll bring Tyler up to the roster and whatnot. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. I get them as a tag team. I get sort of Kendrick and London vibes of them just being seen as sort of too small to take seriously. The no point Dundrick and Kendrick, gotta say. Um, love those as a team. Fucking uh, over and then I'm like Kendrick, he's skinny as fuck. I can't <laughs> say that. Like, uh, that was Fires sure. Club skinny. Then going mm. back into some references there. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know. anything else to do you want to mention? Uh, the other things we got noted down, obviously, yeah, they revealed oh. Cody's on the cover of uh, of TK24. Should be the world champion, shouldn't he? Won't get into that. Um, <laughs> there's that. Um, or the other Bianca, Bianca uh, Belair on the uh, on the uh, the women's one, share it with uh, with Rhea Ripley. Thought was a uh, an interesting uh, interesting note that they couldn't pick one or the uh, the other. Immediately looks more uh, less low rent than uh, than AW's game. Remember that that uh, the Cody is also on. Um, add that noted down as a news story. Oh, you also got written here, Tama fucking Tonga. Um, I assume this is yep. rumour of him coming to the Fed. <laughs> is that what's being said, JP? Yep, apparently so. This is according to Dave in there. That apparently they've been interested in signing him for some time. I don't know why. I don't know the reason. Have they not watched him? <laughs> like, seriously. Apparently he's been good the last while. Right? He was good at Wrestle Kingdom. Mm. Like, you know, he had a good match. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm never having it with him. No, I, I'm, I'm just I'm just predisposed to dislike him. However, as a heavy for fu- to liven up fucking Roman Reigns and whoever, like to have as a heavy in the background, to have the kind of storyline as being part of the extended extended family and and all the rest of it. Get him in there, like I'm fine with that. Weirdly, because he'll be on TV programs I'm not really watching. It's just <laughs> I've been like this stuff with. Him. I mean, even when he was good, I, he was never great. And that's oh, the yeah. problem. It was overblown. Like, it was overblown. It was. I think he improved towards the end of his New Japan run. But three to 3.75 tops. I'm not getting out of bed for 3.75 these days, is it? And that's like, <laughs> that's that's kind of where I am as a person. Looking like a well, true but... grapple work rating. There he goes. Yep. Exactly. I'm a, I'm a hard bastard in, in that regard as well. So I fully expected, expect him to be up in there. God, AEW does not need him in the slightest, and they need not to fucking even entertain the conversation. So I wouldn't bother him getting Barry Bloom. I think he'd just be going, yeah, I'm available to go there now. And he can add depth to that kind of stable, at least something different to that stable as well, because they're mm-hmm. running low on numbers at points because there's only a finite amount of kids that Rikishi's had. So like, you, <laughs> you've got to put some other people in there, haven't you, as it's well? Thriller. And if they're replacing Tamatonga with Jacob Fatu in New Japan, then I'm fucking down with that. That feels like at least a much more interesting upgrade for me. For sure. You were saying it uh, TNA, but oh, a seventh circle of hell, mate. Him in extended main events and singles matches. Come on, let's behave. Can't be having that. Well, there we go. Maybe he'll turn up on uh, and Raw tonight as well, but. There we go. That's pretty much uh, it as far as uh, WWE stuff goes, unless there's uh, anything else to uh, to throw in. Uh, like I said, it was a light weekend of uh, wrestling. Luckily, it was a uh, relatively uh, newsworthy one. So, yeah, we'll find out if uh, if Punk lit Cody on fire or Cody lit Punk on fire um, tomorrow morning. But, yeah, I'll say that. And else you watch that? And else you want to, to mention, JP, before we get out of here? I don't know if we've got anything else necessarily I, I watched other than I'll, I'll put, I know I will be watching like Wednesday through Friday this week, and it'll be the fucking traitors. Like they'll be <laughs> like, it'll be it'll be that kind of stuff that I'll be definitely fucking on on board with, um, in there as well. But yeah, no, next week big week, um, because obviously we've got uh, 
Royal Rumble. So it's a big Royal Rumble weekend show with you and Matty this week, which is I'm, I'm yeah. really looking forward to. It. Just make sure you get the betting odds in, mate, because I think that's <laughs> going to be that'll tell you the lay of the land, and particularly after Raw as well, because you wonder if there'll be any like, oh, hang on, do we need to do some story? Need to do some shenanigans here as well. All of a sudden, we've got Punk versus Akada at WrestleMania for a world title, which <laughs> you would have needed fucking LSD at this time last year to think that that would be a potential WrestleMania match. But here we are. I'm just going to throw that one out there. <laughs> so, well, no time, mayhem man. on Mills, which Karen brilliantly did actually explain exactly what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a street. So, like. Uh, uh, but that, that, that at least it explains that one on there as well but yeah I just point people in the direction to go back into plugs mode patreon.com forward slash grapple Raw Rumble 2007 review um, which we've, we've just put up on there as well we've got time coming next weekend we've got um, retro episode 3 up on there as well and uh, yeah if you like some clues go to our, our Twitter feed I'm not going to say X it just feels wrong um, on there, if you want some more clues of uh, of some of the the topics that we're going to be going through on time, I was going to present it on my screen, but my, uh, my browser looks like it's going to crash. So that seems like a perfect time um, to yeah. sign us off. As JP said, get all that stuff. Twitter.com uh, slash grapple pod or Patreon.com slash grapple, YouTube.com slash grapple. If it's a website and there's a slash, put grapple at the end, and you might find us. But yeah, on that note, like I say, uh, go listen to the uh, the Rumble ninety seven uh, two thousand seven show if you uh, if you have the retro time. We will have a film club coming with a uh, with Iron Claw review. Uh, uh, thank you to uh, some very kind patrons, as we mentioned on the uh, on the pre show. Brilliant well. lads, so all that to look forward to. But yeah, in the meantime, we'll be back for Spotlight next week. Royal Rumble review coming. We'll catch you then. Bye. Good night, all.